Well, 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 well. Uh, it has been about two weeks uh, since we had a main session, and for you two folks, it's been a little bit longer than uh, two weeks. Oh, yes. Um, I don't even know how long it's been. It's been a fat minute. Um, so, where we last left off for the two of you was the beginning of a break. Um, the Department of Faith said you have earned some time um, to yourselves, uh, and you have been taking uh, your leave. So, we're just going to go between the two of you and figure out what you've been doing with that time while I mess a little bit with the overlay in the background. So, um, Maximus, what have you... So you have a total of, let me figure out what the time is. I believe it's three full months. Um, it is from November to January. November just, it's two full months. So what are you doing with that time? Uh, let's see, Mickey has uh, kind of armor in the background. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, I will mute when he okay. yells at me. So, Mickey currently has the AC-17, mm -hmm. I think. I believe that's stemming from him wearing horse armor, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, correct. Um, how much, I believe that's splint. Yes, yes. Um, how much would plate cost? Plate. Uh, yes, I believe we discussed this previously. It is going to cost you... Yeah, it was, you... it was some horrific amount. So, we have our base plate price which is 250,000 pence 250 gold and then we have the modification for horse armor which is I think it's two times the price so that is going to be 500 gold boy yep he must be protected <laughs> you have the money I do indeed okay then are I you am... about to drop a a large uh, chunk Damn. of change on this. Yes, You're my boy. You're dropping fat stacks right. for Mickey. My boy. Normally, this look would be a thing where, you know, beautiful. you wait a couple months for it to be made, but um, again, downtime, so it should work out, I'd say, pretty perfectly. Um, this can get completed within the two months, especially if, you know, you're willing to toss your weight around a little bit and say, well, you know, I am a judge, <laughs> so it could be expedited. So yeah, we can get Mickey uh, his plate armor. Uh, that'll increase his AC to um, 18. Be 18 now. Indeed. Um, and, and my boy. And it looks stunning. Yes, immaculate. You want to use a vocab word. Um, additionally, I think that, you know, surviving a whole arc of the campaign, Mickey has earned himself a small little bonus. Um, so roll me a D12. Let's go! My Good boy. job. Um... Boy. Now, you could roll one here, and it could be nothing, so, you know, don't get too excited. <laughs> That's what happens when I rolled my AG. No! <laughs> so, Mickey no! now has 29 uh -huh. maximum AG instead of 26. You know what it is? That's no! so unlucky. Tis, twitted twiz. <laughs> Uh, it is what it is. See. Oh, uh, where are we? Are we in Virginia? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, you guys are in... So, this begins in the capital. Um, in the city of Ethos, but the chance is very good. In fact, you can just about any corner of the empire. Is it just me, or is he, like, all... Oh, oh he's all... Uh, okay, yeah. For Pog me, we're all like... Yeah, okay. Is it even yeah. slightly better? I, you're you're better yes. now. You're not, you're not okay. doing it anymore, so. Okay. Well, um, this will start in Mythos, um, and can okay. basically end anywhere. I mean, you guys have two months uh, free time to do whatever you want. Okay, uh, where is Mythical the cheapest? Where is Mythical the cheapest? Uh, anywhere in the Empire is going to have a relatively similar price. Um, some provinces have strict price controls in it, um, so it's going to be costing you about 25 gold pieces per pound of Mythical. Um, question. Uh, that's it? Yeah, the price massively collapsed from uh, the a certain empire falling apart. All right, all right, okay. I'm gonna do some math here. I'm okay, do some while he's math. doing that math, Peach, what was your question? Um, how am I in the same place as him if I was revivifying that cleric? Lady? Technically, you're not in the same place. I'm just saying, oh, for good. it's two full months, so you can be anywhere in the <laughs> for those two months. Like you got can, it. Yeah, lots of travel. So yeah. got it, got it. We're starting. Um, with what he does I during two of... months, and then we'll loop back to you. 
Okay, got it. So you want me to be nice and silent for this? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you can feel free to interject if you have questions or anything like that, obviously. All right. I don't know. I was just wondering if I was meant to be actively oh, saying no, what no, I was no. doing. There's, yeah, we'll, we'll cover what you're doing during the two months. Ever. All right. Okay, doke. Math, math problem one did not work out for me. Math okay. problem two, on the other hand, math problem two worked out beautifully. Wait, wait, oh. math problem two works out even better because oh it's my. not that actually. I forgot. It's, it's halved. Yeah, so you're only buying half the amount of metal as you would for a normal weapon. A shield costs six pounds normally, which means a mithril one costs three. Yes, so it'll cost you seven or five gold pieces. Based, I'm doing that. Okay, great. Yeah, you just burn 75 gold, find a nice, uh, you know, call it 80, just because you can get some nice embellishments on your shield. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. that, that's that way easier, Matt. Yeah, you can find yourself a craftsman in Ravinium or Regia or Flamium, more than willing to uh, decorate a shield with anything you want. Uh, and that is a plus one shield for you. Right. Uh, do I get a choice of what to decorate it with? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're paying the Dwarven craftsman. As long as it's not garish to Dwarven sensibilities, he'll be more than happy to put it on there. Uh, I don't think so. It, I assume uh, Clan Ignea has some form of, um, uh, like a... Like a... Yes, Clan Ignea. Is an open book on fire. Uh, -oh. uh you cut out there. Clan Ignea's symbol is an open book on fire. Oh, that was better. Good job. All right, I'll put that on the shield. Okay, easy enough. You place that. You can get that embossed onto the shield cover, clearly showing your transition from Clan Bologna to that of Ignea. Right, and then I'm going to see if I can think. You know, when I began this, I was like, all right, I'm going to get rid of my riding horse at some point and get a war horse. But now, uh, that that's unthinkable. You could probably get yeah. Mickey retrained, but not within uh, the limited time we have here. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, unthinkable to get a new horse. Never. Um, if, if you're if you're not sure what else you'd want to do during the two months, we can cut to Pichu. Oh, uh, it can give you some ideas. Two months is a very long time. What you're describing takes like a week. Yeah, yeah, uh... Okay, yeah, that's me. All right, then we will cut to you, Peach. So you are a little bit separated from the rest of the party. As they're yes. off going to through Sedalia and to Methasia, having, you know, the time of their lives, you are sitting in Fort Romulus in the aftermath of the battle there. You are there when a variety of officers are arrested and carted off to various detention facilities throughout the southern portion of the Empire, uh, and mm. you are there for the transferring of um, Mother, I want to say Patricia, but I know that's absolutely wrong. Uh, so I will go find the. The lady name. I saved. Yeah, her name's not Mother Patricia. I don't know why that's, but oh, it's, it's what I, I want to say. I probably have her name somewhere. Uh, oh, did I find it? I did find it. Mother Dulcion. Um, ah. You, yeah, you stick around with Mother Dulcion at Fort Romulus, um, and eventually, her body will be transferred to the Faith city of Parla. Um, since you were casting a spell called um, Gentle Hose on her, her body be preserved. Mm. And she can be revived with no trouble. Um, normally this would give you a bonus with the Department of Faith. You guys' relationship with them is already maxed out though, so nothing really to be done there. Um, but sh she will be deeply thankful that she is alive again uh, and can continue to serve Aurelian soul. May I, um, may I ask her when I, when I do revive her? Um, yeah, we can cut to the then. specific scene. Uh, the two sure. of you guys would be in the crypt of Parla, uh, underneath um, a flaming church. Uh, these crypts are adjacent to the dungeons, and occasionally screams of the tortured uh, heretics who are held in those dungeons will echo into this part of the crypt. But today, that is not the case, because the holy men and holy women of Parla have come down to the crypts to bring back one of their own. There's a very high-level cleric here, a uh, ecclesiarch, and she will be doing the honors herself. Uh, Mother Dolcion's body has been uh, redressed into the finest of vestments. Uh, her holy symbol has been placed on her chest, and it's a uh, it's a ceremony of a lot of like respect and burning of incense. And um, mm. she will be revived. The room will fill with golden light. There will be a single sort of booming voice that fills the chamber, just saying one word: rise. And the corpse of Mother Dulcian will flash with life. Her eyes will open. 
air will fill her lungs and you know the party will there will be celebration for probably 30 minutes to an hour before you can finally get her alone but um you guys are within the crypt chamber which has been transformed into a bit of a macabre party uh, and you can get a moment mm. alone with her mother dulcian i'm so glad to see that you are well again yes and the ecclesiarch mentioned your uh loyalty to my body i appreciate it it's always good to be able to continue to serve I just wanted to to check, I guess. It's a little bit late and after the fact, but I was very unsure if this was the right thing to do, considering that you you serve a, a god and I don't know the exact um, boundaries of your faith to she bring you... She puts a hand on your shoulder and says, It's quite all right. Whether I go to the Tranquiline Halls now or in many decades, there will always be use for me by the Almighty. If I am back, it means he has deemed it to be so. I see. So, so you are you are happy and okay with the decision I had to make when you weren't able to make it for yourself? Mm, that's what you don't understand. It wasn't your decision. It was the Almighty's. He put you there. He established everything. Then when the words were spoken, I came back here. That was all by his will. There's nothing you could have done to subvert it, even if you tried. You believe that I... I did the Almighty's will? <laughs> of course I do. That's interesting, because I, I didn't feel like I had him watching over me, per se. In fact, I felt incredibly stressed out if, if I was doing the right thing or not. <laughs> Whatever you're doing is the right thing. If it were wrong, it could not happen. There's is a greater it? destiny behind all of this, and the Almighty shepherds that path. Well, I'm I'm very glad to hear that you were feeling happy now, she and that nods everything's her head. okay. Well, I, I must be going. I will it in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank and you very you can much. Leave yeah. the city of Parla. Um, she'll uh, before you leave the city, she will make sure that a parcel is delivered to you a golden holy symbol to Aurelian soul. It's not particularly valuable, uh, but it is, you know, a personal token of her thanks. And what is, like, a holy symbol? Is it, like, a necklace or, like, a bracelet? Um, for Aurelian soul, it's going to be a, uh, a sort of visual symbol of a burning bonfire. A necklace that you'd wear around your neck. Oh, cool, a necklace. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll put it on and... I'll feel really happy with it. I when I um was going at first to save her, I remember that there was a little conflict in the party where some members thought that because she had died and she was a cleric that maybe she'd be upset. And truly, I had no idea if she would be. Cuz yeah. like maybe she is like no, you know, Aurelian Saul chose to take me and you have kind of intervened, but R Renesme is very relieved to know that she didn't negatively impact this like inspirational lady's life. You know? Yeah, she seems more than happy to be back. Woo! Good. <laughs> um, I sent you a little list of things that I yes, would like to do. Yes, indeed you did. Uh, we can start working through these if you want. Yes. Now, you uh, can tell me if if you think I should have to pick three or two or you know, whatever, whatever you think. Yeah, I can probably so... narrow down. The first one, uh, obviously, reviving Cleric with her diamond, you know, there's that whole thing. Easy enough. Yes, yes. Finding a true. pearl of power or knowledge where there may be one. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, you're not going to find it one directly, but you can certainly start to gain bits of knowledge about it. Um, Happily. Since you have such a good relationship with the Department of Faith, you can use their library and mythos at no cost, uh, only at a cost oh, of awesome. time. awesome. So, um, for every week you spend on this, you can roll an intelligence check and potentially learn information on it. Um, do you want to, like, do you want to commit a number of weeks to this, or do you just want to start rolling week by week and see what you find? Ooh. Um, okay, wait, let me put that on a back burner. I want to see what it okay. would take for me to do some of the other things. Um, how All long right. would it take for me to get, like, armor for myself that would help improve my stealth and armor for Nami? So, for improving your stealth, unfortunately, the only thing you can really do at that point is a magical item. Uh, which again is going to require research or a disgusting mm. amount of money. Not really easy though. Um, similar mm. to even, it's going to basically cost the base cost of the armor multiplied by two. So if you want to get Nami, you know, 
plate armor like Ethan did for his is going to cost you 500 gold. Um, do you have a price range that you're thinking? Um, no, I don't need it to be like super crazy heavy armor. Even if it was just like a more natural armor like hide or um, okay. something like that, I'd be fine with it. I just yeah, want to give her something. Yeah, you get some simple chain mail for the horse for uh, 1,200 pence, which is 12 gold. Or, sorry, 12,000 pence. 12 gold. And is there anything nicer? Like, what's yeah. like around 100 gold? What 100 can I get gold for would get you a breastplate. So there'd be solid plate on the chest of the horse, so it couldn't get pierced by lances, and then the side would be decorated with mail. And that would get you 14 AC. Okay, okay. I'll do that. Wait, wait huh? 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 You said a hundred gold, right? No, that's not sixteen. Just, just, there's no, there's nothing between sixteen and the next ah. step up is a hundred and sixty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a hundred and sixty. No, it goes sixteen gold is a breastplate, and then the next item up for AC costs you literally ten times more. So that's why I didn't mention it. Oh, uh, got it. So it would be yeah. sixteen. Is, sixteen for breastplate. Oh, okay. Splint yeah. is forty gold. Oh, you're right. Splint is pretty gold. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Splint, splint? Armor. splint is a type of armor in real life typically used in the Near East or like Asia. Uh, it's just like a heavy form of armor used. Um, yeah, it's it's 17 AC, costs 40. Um, the only disadvantage of putting it on a horse is that it's very heavy, 60 pounds. Boy, Which, I mean, for loud. horses. Oh, yeah, it's also um, loud. Very loud. So Nami would never be able to be stealthy with you. As She's in, you have stealthy. disadvantage on stealth. Yeah, yeah, no, I won't do that. I'll do okay. the, the breastplate or whatever. Great. 16 gold, and I've already adjusted Mommy's AC of three. What's 21 minus 16? 21 minus 16 is 5. Okay. Got it. I upgraded oh, my I'm so gold. impressed that you're improving on that. <laughs> it's unlikely just has this game. <laughs> it's a exclusively. breastplate <laughs> armor. Okay, yeah, 14 good. Does yeah, Nami... Because... Armor. Well, Nami also kind of survived an arc of the campaign, if you think about it. Yeah, but you're it, not so. a cavalier, so you don't have a like, mechanically special attachment to the horse. <laughs> you could get her retrained as a war horse, but... Um, Just crying. That'll take a very long yes. time. Yes. That was me crying. Um, okay. And I can't do anything to improve my armor um, or uh, stealthy stealth abilities. Stealth-wise, yeah. So I'll double check. You may be wearing some... Basically, there, there's only armors that impede your stealth, not ones that improve them. The only way to improve your stealth is by training the skill, getting a better dexterity, or getting magical items. Um, mm. So, I mean, let, let's see what your armor is. I'm pretty sure it's just, like, leather, right? Hide? Yeah, hide is... Probably. Hide is fine. Um, what's your dex mod? Oh, it's one. <laughs> Okay, I understand. Yeah, it's not very one. good. Yeah, yeah. Well, that. I, I, yeah, yeah, I think when Nesme's just realizing, like, in her battles, that once she's not an animal, she, like, kind of uses her wild shape as a crutch for her stealth. True. But she herself, in human form, is, like, quite clumsy. So she's like, well, if I'm in human form most of the time, I should probably freaking get better at it. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could start training your stealth skill if you already have proficiency. But that I just takes count. No, but I have proficiency. No, I don't have proficiency. Okay, then yeah, you could spend, you know, for every week you spend, you can get two out of 40 progress because the Department of Faith will find you someone who's uh, very experienced in stealth. Haha. Uh -huh. No. No, oh, okay. thank you. Right. Um, What kind of. I don't really use many of the weapons. Okay, well, I guess I'll go to the library. Um... But yeah, so there are three different things that you wanted to look into, which is Parola Power, maybe Stealthy Magical Item. Uh, and then Elvish. Yes. Oh, and then also who is Il Nazar. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do library time on Il Nazar, maybe. I'm just okay. interested because the, the, what's her name, Hag went, Oh, the children of Il Nazar. And <laughs> she did say that, yeah. I want to learn more about my background, or when Nazma does at least. Okay. okay. Well, well yeah, so, how do yeah, I roll? a lot of stuff, so I had to attack them in order. Yep. Pearl what power. Do we, yeah. Hell, hell power? Oh, Pearl of Power. Pearl of Power, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if I'm lisping. No, 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 the living is merry. Um, our Pearl of Power, yeah. Uh, rolling in check for the first week spent every year. So this is, uh, we have eight weeks, so this is axed. Now we got seven left once you roll this in check. An intelligence check, yes. Intelligence check, yes. With and no do I click the ones that are on the left that have the big numbers? Indeed. Or the ones that are on the proficiency bonus? The big number. 
Okay. Or you should just Intelli click the text that says intelligent. Yeah, there you like go. Like that? 21. Wow. That's I do good. Almost a maximum roll, yeah. So, Woo! yeah, you, you make your way to the library at Mythos and begin to delve through imperial, well, religious yes. archives primarily. Uh, and you can find mention of a girl of power. Um, there are several of them because they're kind of consumable objects, uh, if I recall correctly. Aren't they like you cast them once and they um, do big damages? No, no, you can, oh, like, you can use it to cast every day. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, use it once a day oh, to restore yeah, spell slot. Fucker is being used back in something called the Light Wars. Um, a number of priests got together and said, hey, the emperors are bastardizing our religion. We can't let them do that. And so they rose up against the empire. Uh, those priests lost, but uh, in their pursuit, they used a large number of magical items. Among them, they used pearls of power, though what happened after the imperial victory is not really mentioned. Um, maybe they were buried with the priests who once wielded them. Maybe they were pillaged by the uh, armies of the emperor and added to some vault somewhere. Uh, there's no further mention beyond their previous wielders. In this book, let's say. In this book, yeah. In this library. In the Department of Faith's library. In the whole yes. library! Yeah. Oh, you got a 21? Mr. That's pretty comprehensive. Harkon. <laughs> tisk, tisk. So how long did that take me? A week? A one week, yeah. And how long do I have? I have seven weeks. I have seven freaking weeks. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what I have to do. Um, I, I need know. a research. Oh, I'm researching. Um... <laughs> <laughs> is there any if can I research about the pearl of power still or have I literally found everything? You just found what general pieces you could on the you got a 19 out of 20 So of all the books in this library, you did a very thorough search and the only bit of information you're to find is that it was used on by this, this rebel faction of priests against the government What what okay what? now I'm going to look into it is what I'm able to research where a magical item is that would help my stealth. Certainly. Okay. Well then, let's see. What? Am I a? Sm oh, I'm a dumb girl. You know, you spend the week looking, know. and there's it's actually there's literally no shortage of them. There's mentions of cloaks of elven kind. There's mention of boots of speed. There's me like there are p scholars who dedicate their lives to just cataloging of magical items and their historical references and things like that. But uh, you find nothing concrete about where one may currently exist. Oh, that's unfortunate. Might go back for that one. Um, now I wanna, I wanna look into. Um, oh, should I even look into this? Can I look into learning Elvish? What do I get if I learn Elvish in this library? What do I? Um, is you would not good... be able to learn Elvish in this library. You need to go find a study, or, or sorry, a professor of um, Elven studies to essentially teach it to you. And then it'd be like two out of 40, et cetera, et cetera, until I got proficiency. Yes, each week you would gain two progress out of 40 because an expert is teaching you it. That's so cringe. <laughs> um, okay, well, can I look into then? I want to look into the ornaments of Karul. Yeah, uh, yeah, roll me an inch check. Oh, yes, I will, Mr. Hawthorne. Armaments, by the way, not ornaments. Okay, that's a bad week, but maybe next week. Okay, that's a bad week, but maybe next week. There All it right. is. All right, so you spent three weeks delving. Now, there is some information, even with a five, you would find Cal Rule of the Vile is one of the most famous historical figures from recent, you know, Mythosian history. Yes, uh, it's I'm in looking the third into week this whole, this whole idea. More. Yes. Oh, okay, well, um, what are the armies? Yeah, See, that, those that are should all be easy titles. to find. Um, Kalarn Randarin. You will find no mention of that anywhere in this, in the Department of Faith's library. Um, the Necromortis, obviously there's a lot on that. Um, there is mention of Samnia, but there's no mention of an Elven city there. Okay, so, yeah, there's that. All the Kalarn stuff, that you're just not going to find that in, um, in the Department of Faith library. But, uh, you will be able to find a lot more about Cal Rule and his armaments. Um... How, what, what do you want from me here? Do you, do you want me to tell you like the history of Cal Rule and like what his armaments are? Like how how, how much Absolutely. depth do you want? Absolutely. I want you to go on your longest tangent because I will absolutely be going back into the spot and writing it down word for word. So please take the floor, Harkon, <laughs> okay, and prepare to okay. be quoted. I will. Okay, then I will give you as much as I'm willing to give. Oh yes. <laughs> so, please. Um, Cal Rule the Vile. 
So Cal yes. Vile, as I said before, one of the most mm-hmm. famous people in the last several centuries. Um, during the days of the Regenian Republic, which preceded the Empire, uh, he was from a city called Samnia. Um, it's just another one of the many cities of the Republic. He was a wizard, not particularly notable in his youth, but he began to gather power. And he specifically was studying ancient runes located along the boundaries of a wood to the south, which at the time wasn't called the Deadwood, but now is universally called that. Uh, And during these searches, he found old keeps and crypts. He found grimoires and strange secrets. All of this is sort of obscured in mystery and occultism and mysticism. Uh, But ultimately, when he returned from his studies along the boundary of this wood, he was a necromancer. Um, He started Necromortis as a sort of uh, social club in Samnia because necromancy had been gone from the world for so long that it wasn't even known as like, oh, this is a magic that you need to avoid. It was Kaul who sort of reminded people that necromancy is such a potent and almost fundamentally Mm. evil magic. Um, And during this time when he essentially ruled over Samnia with political influence, uh, he began to collect items all across uh, the Regina Republic and make items of his own because he was such a powerful sorcerer. Um, And these are where the armaments come from. Um, Armaments are descriptions of weapons or items that he may have used. Um, and inside of, you know, various books talking about his past and uh, accounts of his later defeat, you can find mm-hmm. um, that there are four items that are like closely attributed to him as his armaments. There is the Staff of Kaurul, which he made himself um, after returning from his uh, research on the Edge of the Woods. There is the Eye of Kaurul, which is not actually his eye. It's a emerald that he enchanted. There's the Flesh Cloak of St. Marcus, which is um, basically a a priest came to the city of Samnia to try to dislodge Kaurul and his cult, and Kaurul killed the man, flayed him alive, and then uh, turned his cloak into a magical item. Uh, Sorry, turned his skin into a magical item. Killed him, then flayed him alive? No, no, flayed him alive, then killed him, used his skin to make the cloak. You know... Who knows the order of these things? It was 200 years. Oh, nice. Yeah, you, yeah. You, missed the, you missed the obvious there, him being a necromancer and all. He very well could have done it in that order. Yeah, true, actually. Good point. Yeah, that's um, true. That's true. And the last item is one called Fun Fun Doos, which you don't actually find any mention of that in most of the versions of the history. However, there is a Dorvern historian living in the city of Ravinium um, who wrote, writes that his grandfather... Uh, who was an old man 200 years ago, made a weapon for Kaurul. And upon the weapon's completion, Kaurul killed this historian's grandfather and trapped his soul in the dagger. So those are the four items associated with Kaurul and can be considered and his armaments. W- w- was there any mention of why he would put his soul into uh, the Yeah, the story says Kaurul is evil, but obviously that doesn't really help you. The- is there any mention of what the weapon does? <laughs> is it it's like a dagger. blade that cuts? Okay. Based. Basically, there is no like, there is no glimpse into the man in any of these records. It's just, oh, he's evil, and then continue with the story. <laughs> into a dagger, a dwarven dagger. Yep, this poor door. If the story is true, which it is only from one person, um, then there is a dwarven smith who made a dagger, and then his soul was trapped in it, and Kaurul used it as his sidearm. Does it say the name of the dwarven historian that's writing this? Yes, Bali Loken. Bali Loken. Yep. When was this written? Uh, this would be about 20 or 30 years ago. So you should still be alive. Most certainly. Dwarves lived for three or four centuries. Ooh! Wow, 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 we won. Very nice. <laughs> wow, wow, we <wee>, wow. <laughs> Sorry, I just looked over and the two cats are fighting. It's you very funny. More at noise. <laughs> um, okay, the Staff of Karul, the Eye of Karul. What, is there any mention as to what the Eye of Karul does? It's an enchanted emerald. Does it help him see things? Um, Probably not in this library, no. Most of this would just be, like, the talking about his defeat, or the war against him, or the role there's of the no, church like, in his defeat. You know, there's no, like, like, like you know, speculation. Or it, it's not, the, it's just that that's not what this library is about. This library is about the church and its contributions, and the Department of Faith, and it's, like, you know, proto-forms before the Empire was founded, so it just doesn't really, it's not concerned with those types of things. Mm. Um, it talks a lot about the flesh cloak of St. Marcus. There's extensive, because he was a priest, uh, so there's extensive uh. talks about that one, but not about Can the Can I get just more staff. more people talking about it? <laughs> yeah, the flesh cloak of St. Marcus. Uh, so, 
I guess to fill in the timeline a little bit, after Cal Rule was in the city of Samnia and established the Necromortis and did all this stuff, he was driven out of the city by a sort of unified coalition of the Reginian Republic uh, and a mm -hmm. young general who would later be known as Aurelian Domitus, um, who conquered, you know, made the empire what it is. Uh, he mm -hmm. was the one who drove Cal Rule out, and Cal Rule fled to the south and to the Deadwood, which is far, which was far further north than it is today. He went there and he began to wage war against the Republic. And this is like, you know, um, in recent times, you guys had the Galantine War, which was like pretty spooky. Oh my God, what if the Necromortis win? 200 years ago, it was like, oh no, they are going to win. It's just a foregone conclusion. The question is how long can we hold out? Because uh, Count Rule was literally raising legions of like 10,000 undead with the raise of a hand. And every battle he fought, he got stronger. Um, then, in a sort of twist of historical fate, uh, Count Rule was assassinated by a organization of adventurers though they're not really an organization, just a group of people called the Shield of Calvenza. Uh, and then he was killed, and, you know, there's a small little thing where 11 years later he came back, but then he was killed again, so he's dead. <laughs> and, um, Cal Rule, uh, the Flesh Cloak of St. Marcus, this whole story takes place when he's still ruling the city of Samnia. But this cloak follows him for the rest of his career until he's killed by the Shield of Calvenza. And throughout those times, the object seems to grow in power. It is a powerfully desecrated object, meaning that like there's spell, there's a spell, mm. spell called hollow, uh, and when it hollowed ground is just like it's corrosive to good creatures. Not even just good creatures, just holy creatures. So like clerics and stuff like that. And oh, desecrated ground is the opposite. So you would smell, you know, the filth, the the corruption drifting from the cloak. It would make clerics, you know, cringe in pain. And most importantly, it suppressed the ability of clerics to cast spells. Um, there's no mention oh. mechanically how it would work. It's just more so that. It is famous that Kaurul was unkillable by clerics because they just couldn't cast magic in his presence. Oh, that's so interesting. Like, he's so fucking evil with that cloak on. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then, you know, after he was killed, um, all of his armaments were, you know, taken by his slayers, the Shield of Calvenza. Um, mm. And there's no mention of the Flesh Cloak after uh, Kaurul's defeat. Got it. Um, as as for the light wars and the priests that fought there, is there any mention as to where this happened? Um, the light wars, yeah. So the light wars place fought. Light wars very recent in the grand history of everything. It was about I want to say sixty years ago, something sixty fifty years ago. Um, so it was a civil war, meaning that like all, all the stuff we're looking at on the map right now, all of that was mm -hmm. like had to pick a side. So. The city of Chaco fought for the priest, the city of Parla fought for the priest, Vinny fought for the imp, uh, Lami fought for the priest. So, so you're, like, you're breaking up a lot right now. Oh, Monka W. Uh, better. Okay, well, um, yeah, basically it was a civil war, so different cities joined different sides. There was no single location where the battles were fought, um, but the most famous battle of the war, and there would certainly be a pearl of power there, is the battle of the, uh, I think it's called the Clovian Bridge. Um, which takes place just to the west of Mythos along that river. Mm. Got it. Yep. The west of Mythos along that river. You see the river to the um, west of Mythos. Yeah, am river. I able to, during the rest of the weeks here, go over to Mythos, talk to people, try and figure out if anyone knows what happened to the priest there? Were they looted or something? If they were, do we know anyone who, like, has artifacts from the war? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, yeah. Before we... Yeah, before you do that, um, it's not, like, illegal to talk about the Light Wars, but it is one of those things that has largely intentionally been forgotten by Imperial propaganda, because, uh, to win the war, Aurelian Varus Sol killed almost all of the highest level or most you know devout priests in the empire mm. um so it's not a thing that people like talking about i mean it, it, if you're the average imperial citizen you're like oh the emperor is probably in the right and you just forget about it but it, it's a mm. pretty grim memory because he killed a lot of people not I, I don't know if that would impact you searching into it but um no i think i'll be more gentle about it and just okay. ask more specifically like i'm looking for artifacts and information um Mainly just artifacts and figuring out where they've gone, etc. Okay. Historical Only research. A charisma check. So we are five weeks in. I think this is going to take about a week of just gently asking around. Oh, a charisma check. Yes, um, indeed. A. I don't see it except in my. Oh, wait. Constitution charisma. Oh, I'm bad at charisma. 
<laughs> That's not good. Yeah, you spend the sixth week of your rest asking around, and eventually, you've been asking around and throughout the Department of Faith uh, building, and, and you find yourself inside of a chamber. There is a man seated across from you. He wears clerical vestments. He has a gold uh, like skull cap fitted to his head very tightly, a platinum holy symbol hanging around his neck. He has powerful, glowing golden eyes. Um, and this is clearly not his office. This is some side chamber he's taken to talk to you. And he says, Judge Renesme Fabricia, the Thaldro Fabricia, is that what you'd like to be called? Yes. Well then. I'm Ecclesiarch Balchion, and I'd like you to explain to me what exactly you're looking for and your dredging up of old dreadful things. Yes, I understand that what I am looking for, at least the time that it's from, is something that we'd all rather forget and put behind us. I'm specifically looking for historical artifacts from the time of the Light Wars. More specifically, um, what's known as a Pearl of Power. And you think that... what? Well, how does this lead you to asking questions around the capital? Ah. If you're an archaeologist, then go find some students at the symposium and start dredging the river if you must. I thought that perhaps... Um, well, through my research in the Library of Faith, I saw that Pearls of Power might have been used, um, during the Light Wars, and that there isn't much information as to where they went after, if they were preserved as historical artifacts, or if certain families had them in their possession. I'm looking to see one, looking to come into possession of one, and... Hence, I was just kind of surveying the people that were around here, since this didn't happen all too long ago. Um, do you have any suggestions as to where I should be pointed instead? Continue your investigations if you must, but I like it to stay strictly academic and avoid speaking of this thing in the past. As I said, yes, go in, dredge in, the in... river if you must, and speak to those in the symposium rather than those of us trying to simply serve our emperor through faith. Of course. Um, in fact, if you were able to help me quicken this research, my departure could be even more beady. All I need is to see if um, anyone knows of or is in possession of one of these. And the moment I find out if it exists here, I can be on my way. The former High Ecclesiarch had a great many artifacts. The church in those days was very powerful. I'm sure he wielded all sorts of things. I'm sure a pearl of power was among them. But I'm not privy as to where every item that may have been on his person would have gone. And I'm certain the only person who would have been is our former emperor. I see. Who did? What was the name that he said right there? The, the High Ecclesiarch. Before? High Ecclesiarch. Yeah, that is a title which no longer exists. It's like a pope. The, the Pope uh. position was abolished by the Empire back during the Light Wars because they did not like that the Church got so much power, so they axed that position from the Imperial Org Turk. I see, and he was telling me to go and speak to students of what? Oh, he sort of flippantly said, go find some students at, at the symposium and have them go dredge the river. It wasn't like an actual suggestion. Uh, um... He's like, go find do some you archaeology have... students and go yeah. find gold. Like, this is not my problem. Yeah. Do you do you <laughs> have any uh, suggestions as to who may have current knowledge? Your best guess. Again, I just want to stress that I Judge, do not want to be... The only reason we are having this conversation is because of your incredible service to the Department of Faith. I've been trying to put this kindly, but I suppose I'll have to put it more bluntly. There is no historical research into Light Wars. There is no archive of hidden knowledge... And all those who were alive for those days are now dead to either old age or uh, other services to the Empire. I see. Well, I suppose I'll go and speak to the archaeology students and dredge up the river. Thank you so much. 
<laughs> okay. You head on your way. Um, it took I would you like about to go visit the archaeology around. students. Okay, yeah, you can make your way to the Symposium <laughs> in Mythos. It is the largest educational institution probably in Valoros. Um, it has around 50,000 students. Um, and certainly they do have an archaeology department, uh, though it is largely focused on... I guess you'd call it, like, secular, non-religious, and non-arcane history, like, um, old ruins, uh, things like that. Like, Samnia. Samnia is a perfect example. The, this ruined city. Mm -hmm. uh, like that. But you're a judge. You can literally just, like, requisition these students if you have to. Um, now, uh, requisitioning the students isn't a big deal. Honestly, the only thing that may kind of suck is the expense. My question is, what, what, what is the exact plan? Because the river is miles long. Uh, Sorry, you're breaking up. The river that um, mm -hmm. you are going to dredge is about 50 miles long. Mm -hmm. So is your intent to, you know, pull together a small legion of archaeology students and start dredging a 50-mile river in the search of a single pearl? Well, I might speak to the archaeology students as well as the students and the historians, if that's there possible. Are historians, yeah. Yeah, and I want them to collaborate. I want to give them a mission. I'm looking for a pearl of power. All right, I've heard that it existed here because uh, the priests during the night wars used them. Um, and I would like to know, based on your historical research and then your archaeological knowledge, where we think there's the highest likelihood of it being, and then how we might go and search for it the most effective way possible. Okay, well, yeah, so you can start by speaking to someone in the history department, because... Even as a judge, you know, you don't have infinite power. Um, mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. you will have presented this pitch to a professor working at the symposium, and he'll nod along as you speak and say, Can I inquire? Is, is this official business for the Department of Faith? I will raise an eyebrow. Why do you ask? Because we've been explicitly ordered not to look into any topics related to the history of the Light War. Light Wars. Ah. Well, it's yes. A matter of policy. It, I see. Well, no worries. Of course, as a judge, all the things that I look into are official business. Do you I have will flash in my little bunch. Regarding that? I have other fellow judges that can back up my claims. So yes, you have a proconsul, a tribune, an aedile, someone in your command that I can speak with. Um, do I? <laughs> uh, yeah, your direct superior is Consul Lars Ignia. But, I mean, you know that guy. He's the one who sent you out on these missions. Do you, do you trust him to back you up on this? Oh, maybe not. Um, alright. Let me, let me level with you. This is a matter of personal interest, but I am extremely interested in finding this Pearl of Power. I don't have any interest in creating any waves or ripples for you your department or between you and the department of faith i myself serve the department of faith i am a, a religious woman and this has nothing to do with that well, it is simply lady, War, lady judge let me assure you that if this didn't directly violate previous orders that the symposium had received uh, i would be interested in it especially if you could provide the funding for the expedition it's always good to get some field work in for the students but it is a matter of official policy not to look into these things, and unless I were given a very explicit thing that it's all right to do, I'd rather not risk your safety or my own. I see. Question for you. If you were able to simply inform me as to where it might be historically, where this artifact might be located, and... I never mentioned that I ever spoke to you and any other historical artifacts that I happened to uncover in said area if I were to do some personal digging, if I could deliver those to you. I only search for the pearl. Please, I, I'd rather not get involved. If this helps you out, yes, the Colovian Bridge. It's east of Regia, north of the hill by about 10 miles. There you go. East That's of all what? I can say to help you. East of the city of Regia, north of the hills. Ah... I see. You'll find a stone and... bridge. It's dedicated to the battle, but that's all I can say. Yes, yeah, so it would be on 
under the bridge, on the bridge. I'll narrow my eyes the ahead. Battle around was the bridge. On the eastern shore. Eastern shore of the bridge. I'll wink at him. <laughs> I see, nice. and I, I, I certainly will not bring back anything else that I find and leave I it on your doorstep. I seriously hope that you do not. <laughs> I will nod and wink <laughs> and back he away. Sighs heavily. That's you back out of the chamber. <laughs> yes, I will well, not. Yes. For, uh, well, weeks of down are actually is very coming to close. You probably have like five days left before you need to report to Mythos to meet with the consul. Yes, uh, I need the archaeology students, so I need them yeah, to come which he and can't give to you. <laughs> Oh, he can't give them to me. No, okay, he was well, not wink, wink, nodding. He was literally saying, I can't oh, do no, anything else. He's <laughs> a historical teacher. I thought I could go and, you know, have a little chat with the archaeology teacher and cross my fingers. It was a little different over um, there. No, it was a, it was an order given to the symposium directly that this is not a thing of historical, like... Oh, for sure, but different teachers have different morals, right? I might not be able to get him with historical <laughs> artifacts, but who knows about the next guy? Wait, you're talking about organizing an expedition of, like, dozens of people to go excavate a historical site. Hey, this is something that can be dozens? done on the side. <laughs> Whatever amount of students he believes that can keep hush hush. This is not... Excavating a battle site is not something that can be done, like, <laughs> subtly. <laughs> Huh. Battle sites are okay. colossal. They're miles long. Thousands of people died in this battle. This would be like, you know, years of, um... So, like, how do I... How do I figure this out? I'm, you could do I'm this, like, I mean, stupid girl. I don't understand how, how to tackle so, this issue. Well, basically, you have the Department of Faith has the position that this should not be investigated by anyone, much less secular historians. Uh, and you know where the battle site is now. I'll put a little, a little more on it. Um, like um, the Battle Clovian Bridge, one of the most biggest, or one of the biggest, one of the largest in the last uh, sixty to you know forty years, uh, probably the biggest mm. actually. Um, so there's going to be a lot of corpses there. If the pearl power is there, along with the High Ecclesiarch's body, it's going to be amongst you know dozens of others. Maybe they did mass graves, or just there's a lot of unknowns. So you'd either need to a find someone who despite official orders, has continued to investigate this, or go there yourself and begin the work of, you know, hundreds of people solo dolo. Okay, well, how, do, how... What are the options for finding someone who is Criminals. still unofficial? You, you need to find, like, a criminal, or someone who knows how to find those types of people, because they would be certainly not, like, talking about this in the symposium or anywhere that uh, someone from the Department of Faith could overhear. You need to find, like, an actual uh, underground, sleazy individual okay and where would one meet such a sleazy well, yeah, slimy scoundrel party, speaks thieves can severus yes oh when will severus be joining us he will be joining you uh in in real life in about 20 minutes but in game after you guys meet up with the console i see well let's um what what can i what can i do that will further my cause here um, uh, in the meantime, with the, with the battle site, I'm not sure. Okay. You're not very, you know, uh, Renesmee is not very charismatic. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of contacts in the historical slash archaeological community. Um, so I'm not quite certain what she can do so well. Um, are there any other libraries in Mythos? There are dozens. Can I spend five days looking into something? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I, I, would it even be beneficial to look into the Pearl of Power here? Maybe? In the libraries here? Would that even be more regulated? I would, yeah, I, I'd have to ask some more questions about the type of um, library you're looking at. And so you would have four big types. You'd have imperial libraries, which are going to be basically hyper-curated to be only certain types of history. There'd be religious libraries, which is what you looked at before. There'd be secular, sort of like symposium-run libraries, and there'd be public libraries. Uh, imperial records will contain nothing about the Light Wars. Um, religious ones will contain what you've gotten so far. Um, uh, secular ones may contain some additional stuff. Uh, public ones will probably contain only the like mainstream narratives about the Light Wars. Got it. So I'll do. I'll look into the secular ones. Okay. This is going to be the rest of your downtime. Uh, so roll yeah. me an in check. Alrighty. Yeah, no, no um, yeah. Looking through the symposium 
of Mythos's many libraries, you can begin to reconstruct a bit more about the Light Wars and the High Ecclesiarch. Um, he was the chief religious official of the Empire. Um, Aurelian Varsol, who was the second emperor, declared himself God. He said that I am a splinter of the Almighty. I am God, living God, essentially. And the High Ecclesiarch did not like that, and so he led to the Light Wars, a lot of civil war, blah, blah, blah. You know, people died. But all you care about is physically where the High Ecclesiarch was spotted with the Pearl of Power. Yeah, um, and like maybe what he was wearing, yeah. you know, what so he most historical accounts like. don't include those things. Um, there are two that do. There is one includes the first speech he gave in the city of Taraco when the Light War started. And this speech is almost perfectly recorded. Um, it's essentially... It's like the it's pretty like traitorous, but the text gives the quote and then it says, "Oh, and this is the words of a traitor and blah blah blah." So it, apparently, it's allowed to stay on library shelves. But mm -hmm. essentially, denounces the emperor as uh, a false god, a horrible human being. Uh, you know that the imperial line is all bastards. And during the speech, he has several magical items on him to show that, like, not only does he have the power of the Almighty giving him clerical abilities, he also has his items and his relics, and among them, a pearl of power. The second. What other relics? Uh, he has a very, very magical holy symbol, an artifact holy symbol called the Shard of the Almighty. Uh, he has magical vestments, he has magical cloak, he has magical rings on every single finger, um, and he has one of his eyes replaced with a gemstone. Ooh. Um, and then the second mention, the last mention, is at the Battle of the Colovian Bridge. I think it's like three, four years into the Light Wars. The final battle of the Light Wars, um, when the High Ecclesiarch and all of his homies fought against the Emperor and all of his supporters. It is a colossal engagement, lots of people die, among them the High Ecclesiarch dies, all of his supporters die, uh, several consuls, proconsuls, uh, people, the highest ranking people of the Empire die. The Emperor is even wounded in the battle, uh, but ultimately, if this, even this, this very non, like relatively non-biased account says that at the pit pitch of the fighting, as the two armies were engaged in the middle and clerics were casting spells and wizards were raining down fireballs, above the fray, the Emperor, Aurelian Varsol, the Shard of the Almighty, rose into the heavens, opened his mouth, and let Apocalypse exit. And, you know, they give a very lengthy description of the world sh shuddering and meteorites coming down and hitting the armies of uh, the High Ecclesiarch, and it's this, like, you know, biblical destruction of the army. So, you get the idea that if the High Ecclesiarch's body was never recovered, neither were 90% of the people who died in this battle, so maybe the Colovian Bridge site will still have some of this stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's about all you can glean. Does it speak any more about how specifically the High Ecclesiarch died? Like, him specifically, um, or is it just... It is assumed that he, along with the rest of his army, were sundered by all these, you know, crazy magics happening. What's a sundered? Uh, killed, slaughtered, uh, buried into the earth, hit by a meteorite, destroyed by, you know, a, any dozen of which different spells uh, that were being I unleashed. I see. I see. Well. And 50, 60 years ago, how many inches of dirt are we talking? Well, if it's what what's described in this passage sounds like a level of magic totally separated from anything you've ever seen. I mean, they're describing the earth like, like, essentially earthquake like they're describing the spell earthquake which is a ninth level you know like just city destroying spell so if you go to the battlefield and it's not you know cracked and destroyed it means because someone came through here and re-smoothed it which means you may be look, talking like dozens of feet of earth piled on and smoothed out mm. i see okay. they're also kind of a legion of like you know, thousands and thousands of corpses left in their gear because no one has been allowed to excavate it Interesting. Yeah. Well, technically, that dude that spoke to me told me to go and excavate it, and someone could, I don't know, cast fucking Circle of Truth on me, and he literally said, go grab the students and go and uh, pan the river. So, he did, fuck yes, me, he dude. Said, dredge the river, yeah, not search yep. the battlefield. <laughs> Whatever. But I, well, I, I thought I could. It was the implication. <laughs> real, real semantics. <laughs> All right, I, um... Okay, Truly. so right. that is Peach's eight weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Ethan, what, what are you doing during your eight weeks? I'm I'm going to church, but like not the church I normally go to. Bunka W, what the, what could he mean by this? Uh, uh, I need to go talk to some real important person of the Hellion Pantheon. Of the Hellion Pantheon? Oh my, oh me, oh my. Well, are you going to go to the source or are you going to go find one of the mainland? 
Uh, what now? So, the Hellion Pantheon is native to the island of Breton, which is a part of the Empire. It's there, yeah. I mean, it, it's the Empire, it's just where native to However, there are temples to it outside of Breton, but that's just like, that's where the faith was born. That's where all of its head priests are. That's where it's Okay, yep, yep. Are. That's 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 where I'm going then. Okay, is Bozo gonna fucking pilgrimage? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so there are two cities. Oh, place. A massive religious significance in the Hellion Pantheon. There's the city of St. Andral's which is where um, it is said that the head of the faith, um, Rais, was born, um, St. Anne's. And then the East of Red Denny contains the largest church of faith, um, which is almost as large as the largest church of the Almighty. It is a colossal structure. Um, I could go find the name of it. In is moment. that where the most important people are, too? That is, yes, correct. That is, so the... Um, Okay, yeah, I want to go yeah, there. That then. is highest priest is. Yes, I'm, I want to go there. Okay, yeah, you, you get on a boat that burns through about a week, um, and then you arrive at the city of Red Dinium. Um, it is a place. Um, the city of Red Dinium is quite large. It's a metropolitan port, so it contains the vast majority of the Imperial Navy. Uh, it's a huge administrative center, both for the Hellian faith and, you know, the whole province of Breton. Um, two provinces, actually, and contains a pretty heavy imperial presence. Uh, there's a dozen languages spoken in the city as well. Mythos, of course, common, protonic, uh, you know, a litany of other ones. Um, and you can find the church, which I would find the name of. One moment. I know it's here. It has to be. I believe in you, Alex. Uh, Redinium, okay, I got my description. Got the warships, got all that shit. What's the name? What's it called? The warships? Oh, um, well, yeah, because the Imperial Navy's here. Um, yeah, so... I know what it looks like. So, what it looks like is, um, the Hellion Faith, they love minarets. That's, like, their big, uh, uh, architectural motif when compared to, um, the domes. Oh, here it is. The Temple Complex of Kuravash, which is named after one of the gods. So, um, the more traditional worship of the almighty lots of domes lots of arches things like that um however for the um hellion faith they love their minarets they love their sort of small scale architecture but with a lot more detail and so you can stride into rendinium um and you can look for a priest uh um i, I want to go find an important one uh, so you're just if looking for the person that looks the most important? Are you looking, like, by the strength of their eye color? Are you looking by their drip? Their drip, yes. Uh, oh, sorry, what, what's, uh, what's the indicator of, like, you're important in Aurelian Soul? Or is uh, that in the Faith like, of the Aurelian Soul, um, there is going to be, there's, like, hierarchy based on the color of your vestments and the strength of your eye color. Yeah, I'll look for, yeah, I'll look for the drip. Okay, yeah, um, so you see five different colors. You see there are priests dressed in gold, priests dressed in blue, priests dressed in green, yellow, and, uh, like, the speckled green. It all, it all, it looks very similar oh, I want, to I want the, I, I want, I want the gold ones. All right, so, you walk into this church. It is busy with many, 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 many worshippers. Probably 20 or 1,000 people come in and out of this building every day. So, you know, at this particular moment, maybe 120 people spread out around the various statues. Because there are five massive statues, each one. 20 feet high, made of exotic materials. And you can approach one of these gold robe priests. He's standing before the central statue of the church. Um, he's not speaking to anyone. He just seems to be um, praying before the statue. But as he hears the sound of footsteps approach, he'll glance over his shoulder before returning to look at the statue. Okay. He continues to look at the statue. Does he look like he's actively doing something, or is he just staring? Nope. He's just looking up at the statue with awe. Um, hello? Looks over. And he says something, and do you speak Protonic? I don't speak Protonic, no. Then says, so, come on back, there's a fight on the Uh, common? Yes. Oh, um, excellent. Ah, oh, are you the head of the 
this church? Uh, someone important? <laughs> some... No, I'm not the high priest. Oh, uh, I don't suppose I could talk to him, could I? No. He's busy speaking with the Consul Superioris about a visiting judge. I can perhaps assist you, though. Oh. I'll, I'll pull out my judge badge. He looks at it and says, Hmm, wow, two of them. Wonderful. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, then. Father uh, Anzio, I pleasure to meet you. I, uh, Maximus, um, I'm not here on official business, though. Mm. Uh, more of a personal question. Well, I'm a priest. This um, is a temple. Yes, I was granted a vision. I am I am of the Aurelian soul faith. However, I have been given a gift and a vision of some kind from someone I I think is Rais. I'm not quite sure. It's up towards the old statue. Uh, and your eyes sort of follow him. The statue is uh, towering. It is a humanoid with very androgynous fig uh, features. You know, and not compl it's hard to tell whether it's a man or a woman. Uh, in one hand, this towering figure holds a poet's uh, quill. And in the other hand, a sword that is dripping with blood. Uh, and the priest says, Interesting. Could you tell me a bit more about this vision of yours? Uh, yeah, before with that, uh, would this statue be described as having high cheekbones and fat chin? Oh, most certainly. Oh, okay. And thin, flowing clothing? Uh, this particular statue is naked. Oh, oh, all right then. Um, well, um, we went to a sacred... Where Where did we go? Uh, sorry, I imagine I, I didn't write the They're location on. of that. I don't think you got a name for it, though. He just, the, the um, centurion told you it's special. Yeah, where where was it, though? The oh, area? It, was, uh, yeah. uh, it was just in the province of Reggianova, like five miles from Fort Romulus. Um, we went to an area one of the centurions said was important. Um, down uh, near Fort Romulus in Reggianova. It was a pool of some kind. Um, and he told each of us to, what was it, dip our faces or do something in it? Hmm. This was this was so long ago. Yes, it must have been a devout worshiper. That's an old practice. Uh, so we did that. The others got nothing, but I had a vision of someone who looks an awful lot like that. Uh, eyes glow gold, hint of teal. Um, and they granted me a, a boon I have yet to use. Uh, but there was, um. I don't remember much, but it was just something that about... That does sound like Rais. What brings you here, though? Well, um... I... Answers, mostly. Um, just... <laughs> if you're looking for any of us priests to explain the will of Rais, I'm afraid you'll have to look somewhere else. He's very complicated. Oh? Hmm. How much do you know um, about the Hellion faith? Nothing up until I had this. I mostly discounted faith as, you know, ugly wash. We worship Rais as the greatest of poets and also a murdering butcher. He is two mm. faces. He is the sun and the moon. He is the god king and queen. He is a very complex individual. If it were Sotha Sedan or Ayam or any of the other of uh, Rasei only you were speaking of, uh, perhaps to call it the lady site, but I've spent a lifetime in service to Rais, and I haven't quite been able to break beyond even the most outer shell of his complexity. Hmm. Um, I think he said something in the vision about one who schemes, the one who screams, and the one in your dreams. Is that... Prophecies that he provides are almost always personalized. He's been rather oh. inactive as of recent, but it sounds like that's changed. When interpreting prophecy, in my experience, the best thing to do is to not pigeonhole yourself into being very literal, especially for ones such as Rais. They have seen so much, and 
him in particular, he enjoys toying with mortals, the poetry of prophecy in particular. I see, I see. I well, like I said, so. I don't think this will be very helpful for you. And if you're no, having not, not crisis of faith that he has embraced you, there are stories, if they are be, to be believed, that even great enemies of humanity have been granted temporary boons by Rais. I'm sure to him it all makes sense, but for me... <laughs> Certainly is a mystery. Well, uh, thank you for speaking with me. He nods. Returns to oh. looking up at the statue. Is there anything fun to do in Proton? Anything, anything <laughs> well, unique the city to the area? Is by far the, one, the most cosmopolitan city outside of Mythos itself. It is the second largest city in the Empire. Uh, it has ships from Western Valoros and Eastern Valoros. It is anything that you could want to do. It's probably in the city. Oh, I see. I see. Um... Hey, back to Mythos. <laughs> All right, you get back. Two weeks has passed. <laughs> Eh, uh, that was... That raised more questions than it answered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. time to go train an unarmed strikes proficiency. Perfect! <laughs> so, you can, again, due to your guys' immense reputation, which, as a reminder, you've literally maxed out your reputation with the Department of Faith, they will find you someone. Ooh! For, you know, personal expense. Wait, I... As an expert I, com I completely oh. forgot. Oh, no, I don't get that till I retire, do I? He's right. He's shaking. He's shaking. There's like a I yeah. Do you want me to check? Because I actually don't remember when you get it. <laughs> yes. Okay. When you get what? A, a reward. A reward. A reward. Uh. Okay. So for my Placidia subservience. Da, da, da. Okay. Imperial judgment. Max Titus guys. Below me. Your reward is conditional upon completion of a thirty month. 35 month long service as an imperial judge you will be granted to the editorial to rank place your own personal editorial family so 35 months from now all right then uh yeah yeah i'll go i'll go train in the number strikes sure so, so you get a uh, 12 weeks yeah 12 God weeks damn. of proficiency you guys you finish this skill for this game though bro i'm gonna be bored Um, all right, so that brings the two of us to the current date. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I had a side quest prepared, but uh, I think that we have spent more than enough time catching you guys up, so I'm just gonna tell you what happened <laughs> that kept you guys from catching up with the main party, just because it's a whole thing, and I don't want to, like, push this campaign back when we have to do so. Basically, you guys were gonna get given a small little side admin from the pro console, or sorry, console, mm -hmm. uh, to go kill a fae. Uh, it's like kind of an evil one. I'm sure it would have been a little bit of a moral. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I'm sure this would have been a bit of a moral conundrum. Um, but, so you guys, um, I guess, fuck, we should. Renesme, there was a thing, you know. Wait, you know, sorry, the... you're, you're, you're breaking up. What, what is yeah, that? You... Okay. If nice. there was a fae. Yeah. Devouring the crops of a town to the point where they were going to starve for the winter. Would Renesme kill it? If Renesme no would like to talk to this fae. Uh, all right. Well, uh... <laughs> okay, we'll just do the mission then. So, um... Beast. One sec. All right. It's just going to be like another hour before the other folks join. Oh my goodness. Um, Wait, right. just fast forward me to, to the part where I see the fae. No, no, I can't. I can't. There's context that makes it important. All right. Uh, well, oh, then, no, heck no, no. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. No, I, wanna, oh, I don't want to fuck it up for the whole party. Well, okay. Should I? L let's do the nice little middle ground, okay? Here's the middle ground. I'll okay. save the fae mission for later. I'll, I'll uh, you know, it'll be dealt with by some other group or at some other time point is uh yeah if you don't want to push back that's fine so the faith thing will be dealt with by some other group some other time at the moment though you guys will be recalled to me those the two of you a little bit early okay uh you will be told to go do a very small <laughs> errand for the pro console uh sorry the console what happens during that errand we will bookmark for later 
and deal with that another point in the future. However, you guys do a small little errand for um, the console uh, that takes you a couple days. What do we we're do? We're gonna cut back to the other group. Well, that's the thing. I mean, something. It's the thing, but we're not gonna do that right now. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> for scheduling okay, yeah. purposes, we're gonna take a. Um, five minute break and then we're gonna hop back to the other group and see what they were doing and then we're gonna bring it all together um and the fey thing we, we're putting a pin in that we don't know what happened something happened with the fey you know <laughs> it'll be coming yeah. later retrospectively uh, we might have to inflect either sadness or happiness yeah yeah we'll, we'll, figure it out. we'll figure it out something how, happens uh, with the fey. how long is that gonna take out to get them caught up uh 10 minutes okay all right. maybe less oh also let's get a bracelet of warning uh, for, as a reward for killing that fae. Sorry, what doing is... something with the fae. Something with the fae happens, and as a result of that fae thing, you get this. It's a magical item. Uh, you guys can figure out what you want to do with it during the break. We'll be back in five oh. minutes. Lars. As your horse clops along, you find yourself sort of getting lost in the rain pattern and just the comfort of things happening around you. You're not really focusing on any of it. You're just letting the stimuluses pass you by. Your mind wanders. You find yourself thinking about your cousin Phyllis. Well, mostly just him. But as your mind continues to meander, you see something move. Your attention returns. To the right of your horse, Gore walks along the muddy road. Ahead of you, Zednius' horse clops forward with the jangling assortment of plate armor in the saddlebags. Zednius himself is in the middle of telling Severus a story, though you've long since learned to tune the two of them out when they begin to talk to one another. You look around, and your heart is pounding because you can't identify the source of the movement that you saw. Then you see it. It's in the dark space of your right eye. In the darkness that you can't see due to your missing eyeball, there's something in there, writhing and moving. Wait, I'm sorry, what am I looking at? Or am I like, in, the dark in my space, eye, Yeah, in the dark space of your removed eye. There's something in, in that darkness. Oh, yeah, we killed a a, a riven, a, what is it called, a wyvern baby? Wow. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Wait, did we kill it or did we kill it? Yes, no, you did. No, Anyways, this no, moment, I, I was really mad about it. And there's I was something to tame moving it. in the darkness of your eye. You're missing I try to eye. focus on it? Yeah, you can try to focus on it. And you make out a shape. It almost looks like... It almost looks like a, the outline of a hand, sort of in the darkness. And then that object, which was once very prominent, easy to see, seems to fade away. And... The darkness once again goes pitch black. So, the three of you have killed uh, a champion of the lady in a small little village here. Uh, you loaded up the corpse of the champion, the corpse of a judge who he killed, as well as a set of plate armor onto your three horses. You guys are clopping on the road, headed south, back towards Red Dinium to give your report, to probably score some loot for yourself. Uh, lots of stuff. Um, it has been raining since it arrived in Breton, and it continues to rain. The dirt the roads are muddy. Heko, Severus, and uh, Zednius, the two of you have entertained yourself by talking. Um, obviously, you guys have a variety of interests, but um, for these countless hours on the road of travel, um, you can just get a chance to connect again. Um, is there anything of note that you guys are doing during your journey back to Red Dinium. It's the better part of a day, which is the only reason I ask, just because it's a lot of time just spent clip-clopping along country roads. I'm kind of sulking. Yeah. I'll probably You'll get him next time, time Sev. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, that's not what I'm sulking about. I don't know. I couldn't tell after that showing. <laughs> I don't even want to... You know, I might be sulking about that, too. Uh, mainly I'm talking because he killed the baby wyvern that I wanted to adopt. You yeah. had, you failed like, like ten, three times. You had so many chances. <laughs> Hetagal whispers his voice carrying across. You know, all three of you can audibly hear it. Oh, no. Wyvern. Delicious fear. 
I forgot that you had had a girl eat it. You <laughs> fucked up. He's gonna want to eat more now. You gave him magical item too. Wait, I did. Oh, yeah, that, wait. Yeah. Well, it was the priests something that it was only going to work for lawful good people, so we fed it to him. Sorry. Oh yeah, correct. Um, we we're like, nobody second, can use the this. The second, literally two seconds after Hetakal ate it, Hecko said, "Wait a minute." Can't we just have sold that for hundreds of gold? <laughs> and then you guys are like, oh shit, true. Um, yeah, uh, rewatching that vault is no, very funny. He, uh, he took the play he down he leveled up, right? He got better. Yeah, he got 1d8 additional okay. max HP. So, then, yeah, you, there, there's just a bit of sulking as you guys travel. Uh, the rain continues to patter down. There's literally no avoiding it. You will be soaked by the time you get back to Red Dinium. Um... Umbrellas and don't exist, do they? What what do not exist? Umbrellas. Umbrellas. No. Hey, there, hey. there are water-resistant cloaks made out of the furs of cute little furry animals, um, but there are no umbrellas yet. So yeah, you could have like a beaver skin cloak or something, keeping you nice and uh, nice and dry. But we're um, probably trying to keep the uh, body of the judge as well preserved. Yeah, the body of the judge, the body of the <laughs> uh, cleric, the uh, plate armor. You know, you got a lot of stuff to keep keep safe. Um, but eventually, the walls of Red Dinium will come into view. It is the only city that you've seen on all of Pertown so far that actually has walls. Probably a very intentional thing. Uh, the minarets of the great complex of Caravash poke up over the wall. The dome with the great cathedral to Aurelian Sol. And then the familiar uh, peaks and battlements of the governor's palace. Um, we can sort of... I don't want to skip through everything, but, you know, the gate guards, you just, even with the corpses on the back of your horses, it takes zero explanation. Judge's badge, all right, sir, go on through. Um, and th this will probably work well up to the point that you guys are at the governor's palace, but at the entryway to the governor's palace, there will be someone who, you know, goes over to ask you a question about the corpses on your horse before a, another person replaces them. A, someone with the badge of an optio, a relatively high-ranking uh, legionnaire, will approach the three of you and bow his head in respect and say, Lord Judges, I have to ask, what are with the, uh, the tarps on the back of your horses? It looks like it's covering up. But... Well, we found the uh, missing judge we were sent to find, as well as the culprit. So, that was those two bodies. The Consul Superioris and Vice Admiral will be expecting this? Yes. All right. And he assigns an escort of four legionnaires to follow the Yule guys. You guys can get off your horses at the stables. And rather convenient that the legionnaires are here because you can hand over the corpses um, to have it split between the men. Uh, the two carrying the judge will make their way down towards the crypts. The two carrying this other body seem to just like idle. They don't really know where to go, what to do with this corpse that you've given them. We took all the magic stuff off him, right? Correct. He has Correct. a naked body. Okay. Flash. What's to be done with them? I mean, they don't know. And they, we'll just tell them, I guess, hold off with the body for now until we confirm what they want us to do with it. The two young men nod and they go and like underneath the stable so that the corpse isn't getting rained on, but they just for awkward stand there. Holding what it. is the traditional thing to do with like a, a judge that's died? Uh, well, the, judge, so the judge's body has already been taken to the crypt. That is now out yeah. of your hand. It'll be dealt with okay. by a priest of Aurelian Soul. Uh, it's this. But there, so it, there is something you do to them. It's not like you just, oh, well, he's dead. Uh, like it's a random up soldier. to their own personal opinion. I mean, some people in the Empire worship the Hellion Pantheon. It'll be dealt with that way. Others okay. worship Aurelian Soul. It's just you know, personal um, will. Does the Speak with Dead spell have a timer on it when they can use it? Or like the body has to be a certain level of intact or what? It does have to be a certain level of intact, yeah. You need a way to produce sound, uh, typically almost always vocal cords. Um, and yeah, I think there is a limit, but I feel like it's hundreds of years. That could be wrong. Neither uh, of them were that bad. Uh, no. no. Uh, uh, wait, you... Yogi got the final blow with his elders, or did I get it? It's. Uh, I think I did. It was Yogi. He did crazy in that fight. He got like three crits. Um, the spell failed. The corpse was the target of the spell in the last ten days. Yeah, this can work on literal skeletons. So yeah, speak with that can work for a really long time, um, and okay. it can work on easily work on this body. I mean, this body would have and to yeah, be we'll here back from the. Okay, yeah, you guys will make it. your way into the uh, uh, governor's palace. Probably, who are you looking for? Are you going to look for the vice admiral who gave you this job, or the consul superiors yeah. who's sort of sitting in on the meeting? 
Which one was the superiors? Was he the? He wasn't the historian guy, right? No, the superiors. No, was he the guy was the quiet in the meeting, giving the ultimate like. You know, he was the one happening. that was considered like a war hero. Yes. Well, uh, vice admiral and him are have, the vice admiral is the one considered a war hero. Right. Yeah. The vice admiral is the guy who spoke to you guys ninety percent of the time. Uh, yeah, oh, there's something with the stuff. other guy that I don't. Oh, remember. I thought the vice admiral was, was the them. governor. No, no, no. Vice Probably admiral is the war hero and all those stuff, but he's not the governor. Well, uh, you guys can make your way to the vice admiral. Uh, you head through the quarters. Uh, you'll be escorted by um, a guard, uh, just to make sure you know where you're going. Um, and he'll knock, and then you'll hear a voice from inside. Uh, in the interior, you can see that the vice admiral's in a bit of a staff meeting at the moment. There's two or three other um, high-ranking uh, naval officers in the room. His wife uh, seems to always be there, uh, the vice admiral's wife. She's just recording the minutes of the meeting. Uh, and as the three of you enter, he'll glance over and say, Well, that is rather... Impressive timing. Uh, Lucius, uh, you head out. Uh, go check on the Corinthus. See if it's seaworthy. Um, I have to speak to our guests. And the three officers, you know, roll up the scrolls on the map and uh, leave the chamber. And the vice admiral will turn to the three of you and say, Well, timing indeed. Did you know that a ship came into the harbor today? Oh? Did it I have our specific. a lot more? A lot more than one ship came into the harbor, but uh, one ship came into the harbor with some interesting visitors. Is it our fellow judges? I believe so. Yes, a uh, red-headed man who spoke much of his military experience and uh, half elf woman. We'll put it that way. That's them. Hmm. Wonderful. Uh, yes, they, they've been placed up in rooms uh, by the consul superioris. Um, Darling, and he looks over towards his wife. Would you go fetch them, please? Um, I think they'll want to have a bit of a reunion. His wife leaves the room, and he looks towards the three of you. Well, you return. Uh, you don't look particularly battered. And then his eyes sort of linger on Lars, who looks very battered. <laughs> uh, how'd it go? Since you don't have a well, living turn with you, I assume he's dead. He was. Yes, he was, uh... Dead before we arrived. Hmm. Any idea how long? Perhaps he could be brought back. How long ago did you send him? Because I'm assuming once he arrived is when he died. Ah. Uh, two weeks then. Did he look about two weeks decayed? Yeah. He was I mean, buried. You're not, a, you're not and... a corpse expert, but he was rotting in future. No. He was buried, and he only killed like three people in the town. So he didn't. He wasn't there for long. I would say but maybe he a couple did, days before. He, he stayed him. and messed up the other town for a bit, right? Yeah. Or was that the town you're talking of? I think well, the town probably was there for like a few days. A couple days, yeah. But that's still more than a week. Yeah. The vice admiral nods and says, "Well, it's beyond your hands now. The Department of Faith will be informed, and they can proceed however it is they wish." Uh, I mostly um, am looking forward to your next assignment. Well. You're actually the ones who pressed for it, but I managed to what do was... something that I thought was impossible. I what was his specific job, the other judge, before we move to this? The other judge had been told that there were Jade Lady worshippers located along the northern coast, and he had been going to inspect if they were did it, if they existed, and then you know stamping them out. If... Oh, so we should have. But they were all gone right. when we the looked, right? They were all gone. Like they, they were technically there when we first <laughs> arrived, but we were looking for the judge and the culprit first. We should so provide we, uh, that update here to him, right? Yeah. Was he the one that yeah. sent him? No, that was the consul superiors. Oh. The vice admiral, the only reason he sent you on this task to begin with was because you guys had sort of reached a standstill in your main investigation because you just kept having to go to Gala Isle and he didn't have a ship for you. So he's like, yeah, just go do this side thing. I don't really care about it. Consul superiors does. And that's his boss, essentially. That is his boss. Right? Yeah, okay. that guy is one of the probably. So the we should provide the update to him. Been. Probably, yeah. Or the vice admiral will do it for you. I mean, it's his boss. Okay. Well, um, if we you did get the culprit of who took out the uh, judge, but the suspicions of why the judge was originally sent were correct. Yeah, the I'm word sure Jade the of faith will consult the corpse on all matters that are relevant and. The, it'll all be dealt with by the consul superior. It's much more of interest is that supply ship I kept mentioning. I got yes. it here. 
It had managed to survive the storms. It's waiting in the harbor. Uh, the captain's a bit spooked about uh, going out at this time of year, in January storms and all that, but I think I've convinced him. Small pay increase. Um, so whenever you and your fellow judges are ready, well, sorry, today, uh, with the weather worsens any further, you'd probably be stuck here for a week while the winter storms push through. I have no reason to wait. You Perfect. guys? No. Well, and thank nope. you for this great, uh, well, how quick you delivered this. <laughs> you see, uh, well, he looks around, you know, there's no one else in the room. He says, this ship was originally supposed to take a general for the army from Nasius to Ravinium. That was its only job, but I simply, you know, convinced the captain that he'd be much more better service assisting the navy than the army. <laughs> uh, the general and his entourage is going to be waiting in Nasius for two weeks at this rate. <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, you're going to have a reunion with your companions once the f my wife has fetched them, but uh, unfortunately I need this this room here for something else, so it'll have to be out in the hallway. Of course. Right? You said we're leaving today, though? The ship is in the harbor. It's ready to go. It's been uh, su supplied. It's only a two-day little jaunt over to Gala. Guess I'll be resting up on the ship then. Large will start to walk away. You're you're sure you're ready to get right back on a ship after last time? <laughs> Better no than comment. waiting and the weather being worse. <laughs> no comment. Um, yeah. A quick question, make... Hakan. Uh -huh. How long uh, in character? How long haven't we seen um, Maximus and? There's a three month, uh, uh, sorry, two months of downtime, and then you've been on this island like pursuing your own stuff for about a week. So it's been nine weeks since you've seen the two of them. All right. All right. So the two, three of you guys make your way out to the hall. Um, there is a guard out there just sort of waiting. Uh, and you can hear, like, sort of talking coming from down the hall. Uh, you can hear um, Vice Admiral's wife talking. And she says, oh, and they've been doing lovely here, uh, conducting an investigation of some sort. I don't know. Um, I just remember stories of a flying woman. And she turns the corner. And following in her footsteps, you see the familiar uh, dour face of Maximus and his plate armor tucked tightly around his body, a new shield, um, and yeah, I think that's the major visual change. Uh, Renesme looks largely the same as she did before. Um, I don't think she has any new equipment. I have a new necklace. Oh, true, she got some new it? necklace drip. Not um, the Pearl of Power, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, Maximus has a shield which uh, gleans like mithril. Also, Nami fancy, has armor. And a fancy oh, there's no horses in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the two of you guys walk in, but yeah. you'll see when you walk outside. The, the two of you guys walk into the hallway, and um, the the five of you reunite in this narrow little hallway outside the vice admiral's office. Oh, nice oh, it's to see been you so that you're long. all alive and well. Yeah, several. Well, uh, how do they look? Be right with a smile. Yeah, how do they look? Do they look stressed? Do they look happy? Oh, okay, yeah, I guess so. Severus, <laughs> yeah, Lars looks beat to shit. Like, he got hammered. There are, like, bruise marks, like, forming across half his face. He looks, like, he's, like, hunched over because he cracked a rib. You know, he's not doing good at oh, all. Also, uh, right? Xenius is, yeah, you guys, they're also, all three of them are soaking wet. Xenius and Severus show no sign <laughs> of injury, though, at all. What in the almighty happened to you three? Lars, are you, are you gonna survive? Line. He's been worse than that. He could be all right. Uh, what in the hell have you been fighting? Um, Jade Lady, Paladin, almost kicked Elaine, her ass. Elaine, apparently. Jade Lady, like, like the, the one they say is a god. Yeah. She's a person that you could fight. You fought no, his, her power, her. not oh. her. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes way more sense. Wait, I'm confused. So the Jade Lady is uh, what some people worship as a god, right? Yeah, oh, of course. Yes. He resurrected as clerics or paladins. We fought one of those. Oh, I see. So one of you fought one of the clerics. Why? Yes. Because he killed, killed the judge. judge, and he's a heretic. Um, that would do it. Oh, why did he kill a judge? Because well, the judge would say to kill his village. Yeah, to be fair, the judge was being kind of a dick. Oh, Why? the judge deserved to die. No, that's that's awfully radical. I'm asking yeah. you. 
No, he was a judge he was of Orion Sokol. He worked for the... the judge was following what he was ordered to do. I so see. Yeah. That it was against the cleric's interest. He was trying uh... to clear out the cult on the northern edge. So the, the cleric did this to you, and I'll wave my finger around like Lars's face. He did this to you? What? I'm confused. He did the, the cleric that you killed. Did it? Did it beat you up like that? Yeah, it, something he like did. That. Something and like you two, oh, waggle my finger at the other two. Did he splash you? Well, I don't know if you've noticed, Renesme, but it's raining outside, and it was quite far away. If this were a movie, when, when you said like. Uh, when Lars said something like that, we just cut to Lars, like, screaming in agony as he's getting pummeled to death by a fucking maze. Oh, he got his ass back. kicked by that paladin. <laughs> oh, oh Lars, man. It, it was raining. Yeah. Sorry, yes. I didn't notice. I'm just going to look at Renesmee. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not in the mood to talk about it, but we had an interesting run-in with the Fae. Uh, more on that in a little while, I just... Do uh, both of them look the, the same? It's been, like, almost a year, right? Or nine Ew, weeks. Oh my god, what the... Jesus. It's been nine a years. couple weeks. Nine weeks, nine years. What's, what's the difference, really? I said nine uh, months. Nine weeks, <laughs> okay, well, it's been a long nine time. weeks since you last saw each other. What was the question? How are they looking? It was they nine months. Did, has has uh, Max's eyebrows grown, grown back? Are yeah, they I mean, nine weeks seems like enough time to start getting some fledgling beginnings of eyebrows back. I have a whole that, symbol that, around my neck. Don't, no don't listen to him. They're completely back. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, look so at that facial hair. Do you think I can't necklace. grow, Where did I you can't get grow it? eyebrows Renesme? back? Pardon? Where'd you get your necklace? Mother Dulcian gave it to me after I successfully revived her. And... Uh, luckily, she was quite happy to be back. Um, she believes that Aurelian Saul wanted her to continue her service to him, and that everything well, went back, according to his sense. plan. Yes. Everything that happens is according to his pan plan. Yes, I'm Hi. beginning to understand that more, and I'll kind of mm. fiddle well, with Well, this has necklace. been a wonderful reunion, but uh, they'll fill you on what we're doing. We're leaving today to a nearby island, so I'm going to go rest up before we leave. Boy. Sure. Um, as he leaves, I'll ask the boys, I heard that you guys are killing birds. Why? Uh, any particular reason? <laughs> it's well, a long we story. we haven't decided that we're killing all of them yet. Actually, in character, you would... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The lady that was walking towards us was talking about birds, but she didn't... She didn't... True. She was talking about birds. That's why I'm asking. I didn't get like the full thing. I just heard y'all were killing birds. Did yeah, we, did we get to it with she's... some sort of where thing did we know that or no yes Wait, what? we did we have inklings yes. that it is okay basically we think it was just... a oh, sorry continue we think it was a where raven was influencing people in the town to sabotage the fleet oh, what forgive me i don't know what a where raven is is that like as a you werewolf? guys are talking the uh one of the guards begins to like hurdle your guys out of the walkway leading to the vice admiral's office like tw back towards the rooms you've been assigned in the palace okay yeah yeah we should probably discuss you walk. this in private <laughs> or i guess we can talk you want to talk about where ravens and <laughs> as you guys are walking through the corridors of the palace well you see there's these rumors of these things that uh can transform into specific animals and then take on many of the traits of them and that's what you i think this was like a like a druid somewhat but a bit Maybe. It's a slightly different, though. Um, it's it's to, into a, to inform uh, me that there's a great form. chance that I could turn into a bird. But Am I, I don't think you could raven? turn in... No, you couldn't turn into a raven-human hybrid, can you? With arms and legs and wings and a bird face that can fly up to 180. I've never seen you fly at all. Oh my god, wait! You saw someone between their shapes! And, and they were yes. walking around like that, not mid transformation, but in a in a constant state of it. In a hybrid form, yes. I'll have like a a disgusted a face. Possibilities. <laughs> I I never knew this was possible. Perhaps she's stuck. No, she oh, she, she was very much she moved through the three forms. We saw, we saw her as a. We never saw her as a human, but we know people did. And then I think Severus, you saw her as in her well, raven. I saw her as a person. Oh. I saw her as a person. Uh, right. Lars when did. she first left the door. Oh. Yeah. Lars saw her as that, 
and as the were raven or as nice. the hybrid and as the raven severus saw her as just the raven I you think. guys have walked through several chambers. You're now all inside of like a sitting room, which connects to the guest chambers you guys have been assigned in. Um, a servant will just sort of wordlessly begin to serve drinks, trying to ignore the conversation, but it is a pretty wacky one. So the servant's probably listening in a little bit as cups of water are poured for each of you alongside snacks, though. I think it sounds like she has these leaving strange the coins. <laughs> all produce one of the strange raven coins. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely she, a weird coin. She had coins? Way. Yeah. And yes, we what do you mean she three. had coins? Like, like you robbed her, well, or she like she you know leaves a trail of coins in her way? She, well, she sends these to coins the people to people, and it creates a, a bond with them. We think. Oh, so let's say that the lady was in this room with me right now, and she came up to me. Would she hypnotize me first and then give me a coin, or would she give me a coin and the coin would hypnotize me? We don't know for sure. We're not sure. Okay, we all we know is that. Limit. The people she, she would hypnotizes give these coins have to... a coin. Yes. Interesting. May I see this coin? She had coin? a bit of a reputation I, as a... Yeah, I produced it. Yeah, he hands okay, over an I, iron... I take the coin oh, and I'm, I look at it magic. and I'm scared that I'm going to get hypnotized. But it's I look at it. any magic. It's an iron coin. Two-sided. On one side, it depicts... If I recall correctly... Uh, it depicts a date, which I think is six something, six, six, yeah, six, it's the number six and then some numbers follow. I'm trying to describe the exact one that you saw. Which before. was like 600 years ago. Yeah. I, I, that, six, yes. seven, three. Six, seven, three. Thank you. Um, and it depicts a uh, man. And then on the other edge, um, or like the side profile person. And then on the other edge, I believe it depicts a raven. Yeah. A we think well. she was from the cult of the raven tyrant. Well, oh, okay, to be clear, you're that. assuming that cult exists. <laughs> you've never actually, no no one you've met said that that thing even exists. <laughs> what do you mean? It says so on the title of the arc. No, it's a whisper, not a cult. <laughs> okay? <laughs> These are different things. Yeah, yeah. But, What's know. a whisper? Like someone whispering. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm, I'm looking at this coin. And I don't feel particularly hypnotized, so me well, thinks it's not that it's the person, the the raven lady, who is doing the hypnotism. Yes. yes. Well, it's, it's a combination, yes. Yes. The, the curious thing about these coins is, we talked to a historian, and he said these coins are ancient. 1,100 ancient. years, yeah. Over, over a millennium. And they're in perfect condition. I mean, this looks like something. And they're all from the history. same. And they're all from the same place and time frame. Which is Any links curious. to necromancy? But no, not one that we know of. Interesting. What did he tell us about the Raven Tyrant? That he was just a really super powerful sorcerer? No, no, not even. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the funny part. It was uh, just no, one, out of, one of many people who fought over these islands, right? Uh, yeah, one island. One tiny little island called Gela Island, way out of the way. Basically, like, the very ultra TLDR version that he told you is that uh, 1,100 years ago, the world had shattered and everything was fucked. There was no central authority anywhere, and it was just a bunch of petty kings fighting each other. He listed, like, three or four. And one of these petty kings was the Raven Tyrant. In fact, basically, as far as he was concerned, this is a historical footnote, and no one has talked about this guy in 1,100 years, so he thought it was weird. Yeah, that this guy wasn't very important. Talking about it. Well, he's got to be... How did you, how did you find out about this Raven Lady? What was she doing around here? Why, well, why is she hypnotizing people? Captured, we captured the man who was sabotaging the fleet, uh, took his testimony, and it what seemed he like doing? he had... He was being mind controlled. Well, no, like, how he was he sabotaging? I have no idea. I don't remember. I, wait, I, I remember. So he was feeling sudden urges uh, <laughs> to... <laughs> I'll keep that in trouble. <laughs> okay. Um, he, yes, he was so feeling it's like a un, like an unresist, irresistible, just like his body start, started moving and all made sense to him. And he sabotaged multiple things in the fleet. For example, he started, he sawed uh, one of the masts. He sabotaged it so it would break during a storm, killed multiple people. Uh, oh, he didn't. We, he didn't know why he did it afterwards, and we talked about. Uh, talked to him, and we felt some faint enchantment magic on him, and we talked to him, and it seemed that he had recently met this this woman, and when we asked around about this woman and his friends who'd also met that woman, 
it seems she was kind of a popularity amongst young men to meet. And oh. she seemed to have been an acting influence on them. And do you know how this hypnotism worked? It, was it like through conversation? She would, meet them, she would meet with them several times, I believe. When I did detect magic, what was the aura coming out of? Just their person? It's like, no, there Threads was these... coming from them tied like to her. like a tether, right? Yes. Yeah. If you coming remember from, from what Lyra had, it's like that thing. Yeah, so it was coming from their head, and it kind of traveled towards where she was. The head containing the brain, to be clear. <laughs> Interesting. Hey, one of you guys literally made that exact statement in last night, but I just needed to clarify. Uh, did it trail... <laughs> Towards her enough that you were able to track her off of it, or no? We just spoke with the. Well, what happened is once, we, once she realized that we were questioning them, the the thing tying them together broke. The right? It disappeared. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like she still was linked to them and could kind of tell what was happening. She, yeah, she I could see. She possibly, had like awareness through their minds. Possibly, yes. It's it seems that incredibly dangerous and advanced. But yeah. from what were we you able to tell? tell she she did. The magic? the magic she performed was very. From a very high circle, and it seemed like she yes. didn't have much trouble to do it. The mention door was like level four, wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. a fourth, fourth level. level spell. Yes. She, Wait, she what, access... what was a fourth level? She teleported 300 feet into the sky. 500 feet into the sky. Was it? Five? No, yeah. 300. What 300. What thing is that? I'm a fourth a, level. A, I can do fourth level a, spells now. It's a spell that usually. Uh, I don't think you can learn that one, though. Class. She can't. I think I've know it. I think I've read about it once, but it's far beyond me. Interesting. Um. And then was flying at very high speeds, real high speeds. Like I think we did the math; it's only like thirty miles an hour, which I mean, I guess not crazy fast for like a plane or like in but modern context. But back in medieval fast. times, that's fucking crazy fast. That's like as fast as a horse. It's actually and faster, faster than a horse because it's flying. Yeah. I'm assuming you haven't been able to speak to her? No. She... No. Lars Let grabbed her read. and had her grappled, but then she did her teleportation magic and flew away. I tried to chase her, but and she was way too fast. I'll add, she casted that without saying anything or making any gestures. True. Yes. Ah. Wow, that is unfortunate. <laughs> oh. Slowly, Renesme realizes how annoying it was to try to capture this person. <laughs> Yes, well, that, that does seem similar to the way that I turn into animals, but as far as but I'm aware, Lars she only turns into ravens, singularly. made a very singularly. similar noise of the bone cracking as well. Yes, but only turning into a, a raven from what you've seen, yes? And the hybrid and form. the hybrid creature. She didn't yes. make the same noise when There's talking There's everywhere, if you've noticed... So it, we're afraid anyone. Could, there's ravens all over the city, like all Zenius over the place. points towards the window. Out in the gloomy day, as rain platters against rooftops, you see a raven sitting there, on the window ledge, looking inside the chamber. Oh Everywhere. Jesus! Any of these, she could hide among any of them. And uh, if if things are worse, there could be more than one of her type. I wonder. She said she came from a specific island, Gala Island, which is where we're heading today. I I wonder if I'm able to speak to these ravens. They're not relative. They're I mean they're sm smarter birds, but they're not as smart as humans. Well, they're um, smarter than your horse, right? Uh, yes. Well, hey. Now let's now, let's not insult Nami, please. That's not what I said. I was just speaking positively about she, ravens. Nami is very intelligent for a I horse. I didn't say anything for negative about Nami. She's very clever, and so is Mickey. Uh, hey, 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 Maximus. I'm not insulting Mickey either. I'm just saying Nami's a very sweet girl, nonetheless. Perhaps yes, I, could speak I, to these I, I would agree. She is. She is very, very, very sweet indeed. Yes. I think that's a Smart. great idea. Maybe they. I'll put my hand something. up. I don't want to hear this. Yeah. Yes, maybe they know something. Perhaps I can let's, go speak to let's them. Let's open and... the window and see Wait. if that raven doesn't fly Wait. off. Wait, but what if, what if, uh, accidentally, I, one of the ravens is the scary lady? And... Well, then we kill her. Uh, Simple uh, as. Okay, what Simple if I... No, I'm not sure. All right, uh, I'm not sure if, because I'm the seventh level now, can I turn to birds yet? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, oh my god, even as a circle of the moon? 
I think Wait, you have actually, to be like level nine. I also you actually need to circle off the moon. Let me check. Oh my god! I think circle. I think get moon hurt. gives you a higher level. Uh, at creature eight can be level, you can start turning into oh, creatures. Okay. Got it. Um. Okay. Wait, I'm not allowed to turn into birds that have a flight speed, but can I turn into a flightless You can, you can flightless turn into raven? a bird, you just yes. can't fly. Well, no, 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 right? sorry, what? No, there's no such thing as a That's flightless raven, but you can't turn into flightless birds. To... <laughs> like a penguin. <laughs> I posted uh, a flightless raven. That's a fucking That's penguin. You can penguin. Can be a chicken. Oh, oh, yes, I'll be a chicken speaking raven. That, uh, that sounds You can smart. be a chicken, but I don't think they speak raven. I think well, just speak with oh animals. You, I've seen yes. you do it. I know, and I can. I was just thinking, you know, that if I had the ability to turn into a raven, it would be great. I feel my magical powers growing over time, but I just can't get myself to ravenhood yet. Um, all right. I will, I will open the window, and I'll do my little, you know, it takes like 10 minutes for me to do my little thing. As you, you begin this whole plan, you realize that this window does not open. Oh, okay. Um, the window doesn't open, so I, I need to go outside. Room. I imagine they're doing any of this while the rest are talking. I'm just like, I'll just look at Maximus and go like, "Yo, new shield." Yeah, yeah, coming to quite a bit of you. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> so he begins good. to talk about it's it. It's like an approving away. nod. <laughs> ah. So yeah, what, Peach, did we take the shield from that paladin, or did he have a shield? You did take a shield, but if I recall correctly, it was a benign one. It yes. was just regular. The only match so, item was the weapon. Yeah, as okay. you guys, er, sorry, I shouldn't say you guys. Lars is <sighs> fucking sleeping. Uh, Severus is just looking approvingly at Maximus' shield. Maximus is talking about the shield. And um, Zednius and Renesmee, as you can stand up to leave the chamber, there's a slight rapping on the door and a naval, uh, looks like staff officer, he's certainly not a captain, but someone lower ranking steps inside and says, uh, Judges, uh, the captain of the Tempest would like to inquire as to when we're leaving tonight. I don't know, when do you see when to leave? The vessel is ready. We'd like to get out before the storms start, though, of course, um, we operate at your discretion. I think discretion. we should go as quick as we can, yeah? Are you guys ready? Wait, you one, look... one moment, Wait. please. And I'll step in front of the navel and face Sednius and then put my hands to my face and look at him and say, What about the birds? They'll sure we could be here. Else. There will be more on the island, I suppose. Is it, is it not important to, it to is, talk to the It is, but that's where we're going. Now? Uh, we're going where? Well, we're going to see to the Pianzi island where them. she's supposedly shh, from. Shh, shh. We don't know if he's in with the bird girl. I, I guess that's true. All Can right, you flash well, your eyes and literally find out. <laughs> well, let's 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 go on. Let's go for it. Also, then. slight little side discussion. Gela Isle is also known as Raven Isle. So yeah, that's going to be like one or two, maybe. <laughs> yeah, one or two, probably. <laughs> True. No, I'm not fully caught up on what's happening. No, that's I'm all right. No, I like, it. I like you, you pulling yeah. up, picking up the bits of clues. Um, yes. All right. So you guys uh, gather your things. The, the three of you who are staying here gather up your things. You begin to head outside. Proton continues to rain. Um, Zednius, of course, you're the most accustomed to it, so you don't really complain very much. But for the rest of you, it's like... It's like Proton has its own god, and that god is spitting on you as you exit uh, the palace. You know, it's it's not like horrible rain. It's not going to drench you in seconds. It's just just a little bit annoying. And there's a gray canopy above you. It is bothersome. Uh, and that's me enjoys word. the rain. Uh, oh, well, there you go. Um, so you guys make your way to the stables uh, and gather up your various things and horses. And horses, horses can move on boats. They're just pretty freaked out during most of the period. So you guys will be able to bring Mickey and Nami and I guess that's basically it. Um, but they will not enjoy the journey to put it uh, lightly. If you encounter anything like sea monsters, then that'll be a whole thing. But assuming that doesn't happen, you'll be just fine. Um, you see many ravens uh, going to Do roost I, in their trees as you... Um, nobody mentions sea apartment. monsters, right? Did you guys no, see no, a No, no one says sea monsters. Okay. No one says that. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> no one ever says sea monster. No, why would you ever say Good. Good. Bad Good. luck, actually. Um, yeah. And, you know, our wacky party, Lars and Gore, Severus, Zednius and Hetagal, Maximus and his horse, and Esme and hers, you guys follow this naval officer down towards the pier. And, you know, the Vice Admiral, he didn't say you guys were getting a ship of the line, but he said a gun, uh, a cannon galley, which sort of implies... You know, there, there's some things related to that. You picture, you know, a, a warship of the Empire. And as you reach the pier, and the naval officer continues to walk along it, you see 
a dinghy. It probably has a crew of maybe 20 people. Uh, there will be just enough room to fit your horses and you guys. Um, and it has a single cannon on the front bow of the ship. And in beautiful lettering on the side, it reads The Tempest. How quaint. Yeah. Um, the captain yes, is standing um, at the like on the pier uh, next to the ship. And as the five of you guys approach, you know, leading your horses, uh, he gives the deepest of bows that he can provide and says... Lords and Lady Judge, we are more than happy to have such uh, uh, wonderful guests going together along with us. Thank you. You have a beautiful ship. He glances. A over. lovely vessel. Quaint ship, even. Yeah, really and looking small. forward to get on the sea again. Well, um... Oh, dear. I forgot what happened last time with you, though. Uh, that is actually one of the things I wanted to mention. I have voiced my concerns with the Vice Admiral. He tells me that we are to continue anyways, but I believe that the... Sea is quite tumultuous during January, and I regret that we are doing this trip at this moment. I'd simply like to state my disagreement with our moment of uh, leaving the harbor. But yes, no on order, say. so load on your things. I'll look to my side and say, are, are we still okay with going? Of course, we have to. But the seamen saying that it's a bad idea. I'm not a sea woman. We don't go now. We're not going for a very long time, and then we're by that time this lady could be gone. Oh. Yeah. We could accept. What was the main now? reason we came to this island? It wasn't for her, right? You guys were given a very broad mandate by Consul Lars Igna. He told you that you are to travel to uh, Breton and do whatever it is that the Vice Admiral and Consul Superior ask of you. Um, it was like incredibly open-ended yep and what then did i started off with the sabotage him? stuff and then after the sabotage stuff it was the jade lady stuff to yeah inspect the his fleet was being sabotaged and that's how we found out about the were raven and then we were waiting on a ship so we went to go find the judge that got killed by the jade lady cleric um, will it be necessary to take the my horse onto this island is it a large island large enough to require a horse no no certainly not the isle is about uh 100 200 square miles. Do I see Nami's new armor? Oh, certainly. That and Mickey both have Very fancy. new armor. Uh, thank He's you. fancier. Um, I think that <laughs> Nami will stay behind. I just, I don't think that she'll do well on choppy seas, and if it's not necessary for her to come, I think I'll be okay on my own. I believe that. Well, if we need a horse, decision. then you're not riding on mine. It's okay. I can turn into a horse, Dota. Or sorry, Lars. <laughs> Uh, All right, uh, yeah, Nami that hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> is the, you, uh, yeah, you leave that on, uh, here. Well, is there anyone that can take the Nami to the to the horse stables, or should I take her myself quickly? Uh, it's all the way back in the city, so a staff officer will take care of it. <laughs> that okay. is not a take that good be care of her. And I'll look at him and I'll point my finger. I will find you. I'm bringing my staff horse. Nod slowly. Yeah, I mean, the rest of you guys don't I'll just get a new one. So there's no reason to ask this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Who cares? Yeah, They're gonna die not as like great as a like Mickey survival wise, but I am attached to her, so I don't want her to die. Yeah. Well, um, you guys load up your equipment and your horses onto the Tempest. It is such a powerful name for such a tiny vessel. Um, and now we get to go to the map and provide a bit more context to Ethan and Peach because I know that the rest have seen. Um, this, but... Um, oh, you guys would have noticed that I've got a, a sword now, as well. Oh. And oh. nice robe. I dyed the robes. You probably didn't notice that. Mm -hmm. I did, probably didn't do that until after. Uh, true, he, has, he has his household colors now. True. Pretty wicked. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, a... Uh... So just be taking this we can't we can't look at this map. It happened last time, too, and it's happening again. Once you're on this map, you just lag the fuck out. Oh. Yeah. It's really bad. Is it even slightly better if I? It's no, better. That's okay. slightly better. It yeah, might be just in loading in time. Uh, um, oh no, it's bad. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> when you draw, when you, nobody <laughs> draw any lines. <laughs> nobody right, draw well, lines. Anyway, it's northwest of the island. Um, about it's about two days. It's about a two-day trip to the northwest of the island. Uh, that is where Gala is. It's not super far. Uh, if you were a really, really, really talented swimmer, you could swim the gap between the two islands. Um. I can so turn guys... into a, a Oh man, Lars, you are fish. Hurt. Yes, he is. You guys load the rest of the Tempest and he will you guys don't have any crew compartment specifically for the uh five of you. You will be sleeping with the rest of the general crew. Um 
and such is life. Um, time for constitution checks. Yes. Actually, this trip, probably not the first day. I don't think this evening you're going to need to make any checks. Uh, regarding the food, uh, it is going to be pickled fish and weevil-filled bread. What's weevil? Weevil's bugs. Weevil is bugs, yes. Uh, okay, no, I'll have pickled fish happily. Right, wow, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, and I would like two, on this ship, but... I would like two D one hundreds as you guys travel. Uh, as oh the no! Legendary sea monster. monster. Roll for legendary sea monster. So I all got it. You should peach two D one hundred. Oh, we want peach too. There you go. Twenty and thirty three. Legendary sea monster just spawned. Seventy seven. Two and thirty. So, you guys leave the city of Red Dinium in your wake. Oh no. You sleep the first evening as you guys leave Red Dinium behind. The water moves underneath you. The ship pitches. And in fact, that's the hardest thing to get used to how intensely the ship pitches. The vessel that you took here, the cargo ship that you took here, that thing's so big that it, it just tilts, you know, two to three degrees. The Tempest tips as much as 10. 12 degrees, like this incredible slant to the deck, uh, and that is what drives your stomachs into overdrive. This first evening, no matter how much of, like, a sailor you are, because none of you are, like, professional sailors, it's just too much for you. You all spend the night glued to buckets or other containers to, or even the edge of the ship, just so that you can... Even me? I, I rolled really well in the last one. It, you're not a sailor, unfortunately, and this is a really horrible okay. vessel for that type of, um, thing. So you guys are just, for the evening, you get no rest, no short rest, and you are glued to various areas, vomiting uh, and recovering from seasickness. But, um, yeah. could I during any of this before we, be preferably before we get to the part where everyone's puking, yeah. approach Renesmee? Yes, certainly, yeah. So Renesmee is in the, near the back of the ship trying to calm down the horses inside the animal hold. There's a couple of chickens and a goat in here as well, and she's like trying to calm them as they all, you know, bray and freak the fuck out. Just, it's just, babe, it's gonna be okay, all right? Oh, uh, hello, Renesme. Yes! Do not sneak up on me like that! Jesus! I, I'm Fuck sorry, I, almighty. I, I didn't mean to, it's just a habit at this point. Yes. Well, hi. Are you here How to comfort the chickens? No. Oh, um... I'm I'm good. Oh, I actually want to speak to you about something. I'm glad that you've 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 come to me. Um, wait. Do you have something to say first? Oh, I was just, you know, over the last few uh, weeks, I had some time to, you know, think about stuff and talk to Zednius a bit, and uh, I think I've been a bit immature acting towards you, and I wanted to apologize. Oh. And Thank I. You. Uh, as a token of potential friendship, I guess, I wanted to give you this. And I'll pull out a small uh, leather band um, that has on, hanging on it a scale and a small tooth. Let's say, what on the this? way back, um, we fought a Hydra. You weren't there for it because you went with Mother Dulcian. But I thought maybe oh. you wanted a small commemorative tooth then. Hydra. Very interesting. Yes. Oh. Is that... is that like a type of dragon? It's this big serpent-like thing with... I think it had eight heads? Oh my god. A serpent with eight heads? How big was it? It was... pretty big. It messed us up pretty bad, but uh... Lars and uh... Yeah, mostly last. I'll I'll take the yeah, band and I'll be like inspecting the tooth and the hardness, really just like wrapped up in the biology of it, you know? Wow, that's very cool. Well, thank you very much. I actually um I had something to ask you, and well, I don't have a, a, a token of friendship for you yet, but hey, uh, potentially we could discover one together. Um, in the department of religion, their their library. I did some research over uh, the past couple of weeks, and I found out where there could be potentially not only a Pearl of Power, which I've been personally seeking for quite some time, but also various other magical items and religious artifacts that were... Do you know anything about the the Light Wars? The Light Wars. 
Do I? Um. I probably come on to like contact with people. I mean, I've I probably um as part of my studies as a as a fledgling magic practitioner and also as a uh, from Atari, I might from have Atari, picked up something. Anything about the light wars? <laughs> okay, then no, no, not at all. Okay, well, essentially, the light wars. Don't talk about it to many people. People are very sensitive about it. Before the emperor, there were a group of priests that thought that the emperor wasn't the real god or something, and so they fought against him. One of the highest priests, the high ecclesiarch, um, he, he had a bunch of magical rings and he had a pearl of power and he had um a gem in his eye that was really magical and anyways he ended up dying um in this like final battle and i was able to find out where that final battle took place and very potentially him and all of his troops are buried there at this moment uh now Should we the not thing reveal is... that to the department of faith then? No, because they really don't like talking about the Light Wars. So people see them as kind of like the bad guys for murdering a bunch of priests. Um, they killed a lot well, of them. I mean, why would they be the bad guys? They were just defending the Emperor and of course. against the blasphemers. A hundred percent. However, they're very sensitive about this. And in fact, when I was trying to figure out how to, um, you know, find where these artifacts were... Um, I spoke to a historian in, in, where was it? The, in, where was I? The Symposium of Mythos. Yes, I was in Mythos. I spoke, um, to a historian in the Symposium of Mythos, and apparently there are orders that they're not supposed to kind of go digging in this, but, listen, all I want is the Pearl of Power, and apparently I need criminal connections, so I was thinking, since you're, like, shady and stuff, um, do you, like, know Bad. how to... What huh? do I know how to what? Um, I don't know. I, I was just thinking that maybe you would know how to go about finding the dead guy, maybe. Well, do I have fermentary contract, uh, contacts? I assume I made some contacts with yeah, Where you. Where is it? What is the area? Of, um, <laughs> criminal contacts. You also, of course, have Talia's. I'm just wondering, uh, okay, uh, Renes, maybe in what area approximately would this be? Do I, maybe I know someone in the area? Yes, so it's in Mythos. It's east of the city of Regia, north of the hills. There's a stone bridge. It's on the eastern shore of the bridge specifically that we're going to be looking, the Colombian Bridge. Oh, it doesn't need to bridge. be that specific. I just <laughs> want to know what general area it is in. Well, if you know anyone on the eastern shore of the Colobian Bridge specifically, that would be um, even more convenient, but the city of Regia, if they're willing to walk. Do I have any contacts in Regia? Uh, most certainly, yeah. You you have done a large majority of the side jobs that you've been doing for Tolia since you were a young man have taken place in the core of the Empire, which are the provinces of Regia, Sedalia, Methasia, and... Uh, and Atlia. So you would have a large number of contacts, both criminal as well as like people who know that you're from in part working for um, Tolias in the gov. So, uh, I have a, I think I know, I know a few people in that area we could tap for such a an endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm not even quite sure where to go with the information I have. I've narrowed it down, but still, the eastern shore of that bridge where the final battle was fought. I haven't gone there specifically. I'm pretty sure that the Department of Faith doesn't even like people being in that area, so everything would have to be quite hush hush. Um, I'm just looking for the the artifacts. A pearl of power would be useful for me, but whatever powerful or magical rings, emblems, all of that other stuff. Um, you know, if we find something useful, you would be so entitled as to take well, some to per perhaps if. If Aurelian Saul is okay with it, and if he's not going to smite us for doing so. I mean... We've done some... questionable things, but all of it has been in service to Aurelian Saul. And I believe that yes. as long as we dedicate our service to him, I'm not sure it's... worse. Yes, Obviously, and... You know, uh, just digging the... over a grave, I'm... Mm -hmm. 
I'm and not the, that queasy the about that. The emperor killed this high ecclesiarch because he was a heretic. He was trying to say that the emperor wasn't god. Um, so he's a bad person that has useful magical items that yes. could potentially be used to further the cause of Aurelian Saw currently. So I feel completely morally okay with doing this. I just wanted to say that I need some, you know, criminal contacts. Um, I'm not too, you know, in with those. How did you find out crowds? that it was there? I did a lot of research. I read a lot of books. Yeah, but I'm sure other people have researched this before. How come that you just found out? Was there someone who tipped you off or something? Or just a specific uh, thing you recognized? I was just looking at, for information about um, where I could get a Pearl of Power. And when I was reading through um, a bunch of historical books in the Department of Faith's library, I just happened to see that, you know, during the, um, the Light Wars, a lot of priests had them on them. And the only confirmed pearl that I read about was on this High Ecclesiarch. He had a speech where he showed off a bunch of different um, artifacts that he had on him, like religious artifacts, and the pearl was one of them. So I know he had it on him a couple days before he died. Probably died with it on, just gotta find him. I mean, the hag had a pearl too, but I figured that um, yeah. the almighty Aurelian Saul would probably prefer that I take this route rather than haggling with a hag, so... I'm trying to yeah, do the right Yeah, especially since she seemed extremely shady in what she wanted of the people. Yeah, I mean, I'm she afraid she would have, would have wanted to take horrible things from you. Oh, yes. Yes, most certainly. Anyways, uh, if you could, you know... Slip in a good word with your criminal contacts, see if we can make use of them, then perhaps you could get some, uh, valuable resources and, and, um, loot from, you know, this I matter. think that, yeah, I'm not sure we can do much in the near future since we're over here, and I don't have a way of reaching them from this far that I would trust, mm -hmm. but once we're back in the area, we can certainly entertain something like that. Very interesting. Yes. Well, thank you, and... You might um, have to keep it a secret from Maximus, though. <laughs> oh, you make an amazing point. I do not think he would be very happy with this. Yeah. Perhaps, um, you trust Sebnius? Yes. I think he would be, uh... I don't think he would have a problem with this. I think there's I no think harm telling him. And he also probably has some well. contacts mm. that I'm, I might not know. He is well connected. Mm. I believe Lars would be fine with it as well. However, I feel like he having everyone care. except Maximus in on it might tip mm. Maximus off. So perhaps, perhaps us three just keep it hush hush. You know, oh, we have white hair. We'll be like the the blonde secret society of a ghost, people a getting goat from inside of the section of the ship. You guys are in bleats loudly, and you can see uh, you hear like movement on on the other side of a door and a crew member comes in and looks around and sees the two of you sort of, I don't want to say skulking, but whispering to one another in the corner of this uh, chamber of the ship. I'll give him a determined look to fuck and off. he just slowly nods and says, uh, uh, funny weather we're having. <laughs> yeah. Here well, comforting the goats. He closes the door. There's goats on the ship? Yeah, Let's like, not get seen goat. by many more people skulking about. Otherwise, they're going to think weird things. Comforting the animals. Yes. Sure. I mean, what could they think? We're comforting the animals. I'll tell them that I'm teaching you how to well, how to comfort them. Yes, I'm just saying that. I'll narrow my eyes. You're saying what? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just saying that if two people are being sneaky uh, over and over and being observed, being sneaky, rumors might start spreading. Let's huh. just be careful with that. We don't want anybody uh, suspecting okay. us. Yes, we must keep it a secret. Specifically for Maximus. You you tell Zednius. Sure. And keep it between us that. three. I can yes. do that during our fencing lessons. Let's do fencing lessons? Yeah, I've been trying to teach him how to use a rapier. Oh. Alright, well. And he's teaching me more of the etiquette of the higher circle that he's been trying to live in. Huh. Very interesting. Well, I don't, you know, thank you so much for the 
through the hydra tooth. It's quite interesting. Is it like a necklace or or like a what, where do I put it, DM? It's like a necklace, yeah. But you can probably just you, you could you probably just might be doing wear it since you just have your, <laughs> your shiny new necklace. No, no, no! I'll put it on as like a choker thing, and then I'll just have the shiny moon necklace be like the longer drapey thing. Well, yep, she got it all figured out. She's ahead of the yeah. game in the ornamentation. Two chains. <laughs> Two chains. True. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. So, uh, you guys do that before the vomiting begins. The vomiting does still begin though. It's inevitable. Sad. Um, it's you inevitable. guys don't get any rest. Um, you find yourselves, you know, sick, horrifically sick. Uh, however. You guys sleep during the day beneath the decks, which honestly is probably good for you. Being top deck as a ship is traveling uh, waters such as these would probably result in you being absolutely soaked through by the occasional waves splashing onto the ship. So you sleep during the day, but that means that as night begins, you guys all find yourselves awake. The lower decks during the night are chock full of people and they get hot and sweaty. And so the five of you are likely to seek relief on the top deck uh, and look out. And it is freaky. Yes. No, that does count as a short rest. It is freaky because in all directions, there is only water. You're at the part of the journey where there is no land anymore. If your navigator dropped dead, who knows what would happen? Uh, the stars above you glimmer with no distraction of other lights. The boat pitches underneath your feet. There's almost a rhythm to it, like a heartbeat or breathing. Um, and off the bow of the ship to the east, Right, Esme, you see a lone bird, a black bird, uh, flying towards the vessel. Uh, is there anyone near me? Yeah, I mean, there's other people on the top. The ship is always manned, so there's about eight. I mean, like my of... friends. Oh, I mean, the other four judges are on the top deck of the ship. Uh, judges. <laughs> mm. Um, I'll like subtly point to the bird. Uh, yeah, you... black bird flying towards us. It's a black bird on a black sky, so it's kind of hard to see, so you have to, like, raise your hand and point it out specifically, but soon you guys all see a, uh, single crow raven, it's hard to tell from this distance, uh, flying in the direction of your vessel. Uh, does this look like the raven that is hypnotizing people? I don't know that I can quite tell the ravens apart. Is it- Oh my gosh! Oh, He's <laughs> I'll, um, I don't know, grab one of the people that's working on the boat and be like, Excuse yeah. me, sir, is it normal to have, um, birds out this far? Uh, one of the, uh, sailors will look at you and just blink a couple times and look up towards the captain, the person acting as the current captain. It's not the full one, it's just the guy who mans the ship at night. He says something in a language you do not speak, and the person at the helm What, lang what language is it? Neo Apep. Damn it, I don't speak that one. Oh, wait, uh, that's... Making, he's making fun of you. Helmsman will glance down and say... neo Epep is the same language that the... that the coin was in, yeah? No. Oh, what was a neo Epep that I read recently? <laughs> neo Epep is from a different continent. I don't know where you would have heard that. Oh, okay. Um, the... yeah, the Helmsman will look down and say... Uh, well, we're not actually that far away. Um, you see... you know what a cubit is? Pardon? A, a cubit? cubit? Yeah. No. Just a measurement of distance. You see, uh, I'm not the navigator, but from the way he explained it to me, right now we're at the midpoint between the two islands, so we're within the range of seabirds and crows and things like that. That's why the bird populations of the two islands are able to intermix, uh, fly from one island to another, and we're at almost the perfect intermediate between the two islands. See. Long so... story short, yes, it is completely normal to see birds like that, though. Just seeing one is a little bit odd. Normally they move in rooms. Ah. Interesting. Hmm. Thank you. Of course. Uh, and how how are you feeling today? He looks and blinks and like looks behind him and looks around. Uh, I'm sorry, Lady Judge. How, how are you feeling today? How are you doing? I'm fine. Good. And you let us know if you feel any strange impulses. And I'll I'll give him a knowing nod. He's so fucking confused. <laughs> <laughs> he just slowly nods. Okay. Alright, well. Whatever the crazy lady says. I think, I think that this might be 
uh, a normal bird or it could be a not a normal bird. bird. Uh, it's really hard to gauge. I mean, it's it's miles at, at the very least. Miles? Miles, okay. yeah. Well, so, that's I what I said. It's a tiny fucking speck. It's really I hard to like. Good eye. Out. Yeah, you do. You're like a 16 press perception, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, so right. it'll get closer over the course of a couple minutes. Uh, yeah, one of the... I want to ask the, uh, the people that we're with, okay, if, if that is the evil bird lady, what do we do? Prepare for battle, I suppose. What if she tries to mind control us? Do we know the, the limits of her mind control? Can she mind control multiple people at once? Can she just come here and mind control us all? Multiple people, yes. I don't know Should how it works. Should we look I think, I think if she could do it quickly, she wouldn't real when we captured her. <laughs> okay. Does that make... Let's just be on guard, yeah? Let's, let's keep our eye on that bird. Yeah, one of the crew members, uh, the same one who was cleaning the deck and didn't speak common. Are half-elves he... resistant to charm in your world? I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. Do you have the feature fey, whatever it's called? I know that in regular D&D &D they do. Well, I don't do know about Harkony. Because <laughs> if you don't have it on your sheet, then you can uh, I don't. No. Wait, then, no, no. Yes. Apples. Oh, yes, actually. There you go. Uh, I'll go double yeah. check. Oh, yeah. Ancestry. Yeah, ancestry. Yeah, I, like, yeah, 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 I put it in check shot. just to make sure. Yeah, I got to make sure. Yeah, you guys do a fey ancestry, so you have advantage on saving throws. Can't even instantly Ooh. shake it off. Um. Yeah, we get it. All right. You'll so, get a good well, yeah, I'd like to. I would like to get like head cover, like you know, be in like one of the doorways of the ship, but not like fully visible. Okay. All right. You position yourself in a doorway, and one of the crew members, the one who does not speak common, he goes to the edge of the ship, and he will lay out a little bit of dried grain. Not really fit for human consumption, made for the animals, but he'll lay a little bit out of it on a, on one of the balconies as the crow gets closer, and the crow will swoop down, land on Is the... Is it within bow shot? Easily, yeah. I'm just going to look around. Down. I'm going to pull out my bow. The crew I'm looking keep up looking around. The, the crew member looks up towards the crow with wide eyes. He seems excited. I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock an arrow and pull it back slowly. <laughs> yeah, the crew member look around. he's doing like the noise where he's like he's doing like the fuck it's like a like clicking your tongue to like get the bird to come over to the bird seat he laid out on the banister. Crow probably tastes better than pickled fish, right? right? Uh significantly, yeah. Can I can I throw and rip the bow out of his hands? I feel like if they're putting out grain for the birds, they're probably emotionally connected to them somehow. Yeah, you can thorn whip. I mean, if you really want to, make a thorn whip attack against Maximus. He's like about to unleash no, no, his arrow, I so it's just gonna. Just want to do it against the bow. Yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah, you, your thorn whip reaches out, Maximus. Yeah, you unleash the, the arrow. Bow. The arrow whizzes off to the side, plunking distantly in the water. Uh, and the sailor, you know, everyone on the deck just they hear the thwack of the arrow firing, and they all look in the direction of you. Ah, fuck! So. Is the crow still there? The crow seems unperturbed, and it, it swoops down and lands on the railing, and the second it makes contact with the railing, the crew member grabs the bird, and in a act of horrific violence, snaps its neck. Based. What the fuck? Uh, I was going to do that. Renez Ray! It was going to be so delicious! I was so excited! Uh, the crew member Why did you do that? The crew member hides the crow with the folds of his clothes. God damn it! The head wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it anyways. I thought that they were like. I'm gonna, I don't turn, know. I'm gonna turn right to the crew member. Are you going to eat that? He looks at you and babbles in a language you can't speak. Maximus. That's a yes. Bruh. That's a yes. He's gonna eat it. Maximus. Kind of... <laughs> okay. She assumed so good intentions. Mm, no. Okay, I thought that they were like worshipping them or something. Clearly, this is a big part of their I'm like. Worshipping them. System <laughs> here. Could you perhaps. Have maybe well, considered bro was just getting a meal. that I knew that they didn't. Oh, I got here just as soon as you did. Perhaps you don't know what knowledge I have. Well, you don't know what what if about they... these sailors. Oh, really? What knowledge do you have about these sailors? That you know, one's no more Lucius. Well, now I do too. Hmm. Listen, Maximus, you can't just face check everything with an arrow to see if people care about it or not. Maybe no, but should... see, but see, I knew they didn't care about it. It's not if I had to see it or not. I just knew. How do you know anything? Hmm? How do you know anything? Did you ask I... them? No, I simply Ooh, know what? the sailors of this area don't worship crows. And you know the sailors of this area generally. I know that they don't worship crows. Just how do you as know I know this? The pe 
I, I know it the same way that the people of Britellia don't worship the, uh, the God Emperor. Right? It's not, well, uh, you know, maybe, basic knowledge here. Yes, but maybe they have an emotional connection or something. But I don't know, maybe it's not the people in this area, maybe it's the sailors. There are things we don't know until we ask. Mm, my stomach doesn't know that, you know, it's not hungry. And Would you like to go and fetch you some pickled fish? Mm. Do I want the pickled fish? Me, 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 me. <laughs> well... You will go fetch yeah, some pickled great. fish, and the sailor yes. will enjoy. Yes, his... <laughs> yes, yes, that is what I'm gonna go and do. The sailor will enjoy his bounty of a delicious crow. You know they have pretty uh, pigeons are also known as squab. Crow are not that different to pigeon, and quite delicious. Uh, the sailor actually will... pigeon does not t taste that good. Okay. People like squab. They eat it all over Europe. Listen, I would also like to think that if Maximus did thump it with his arrow, the, the crow would have go. fallen yes, overboard. Uh, yeah, potentially. It depends when he hit it in its flight path. Um, either way, that crew member will enjoy his free, non-disgusting meal. And uh, you guys will remain on the vessel. Um, as the next day begins, um, the captain oh, comes is... up upstairs Delicious. and gives you an updated estimate. Uh, during the night, he doesn't quite understand how, but the vessel drifted off quite a bit, so it's going to be an extra full day out on the water. <laughs> and I'd like another D100. Did the storm clear up it. some? Uh, light storm, you. you mean the light rain? Or... Oh. Oh, sorry. Captain. It was the risk of, uh, it was the risk of a winter storm. It isn't currently storming. If it were currently storming, you guys mm. wouldn't be on the water at all. It's just January is the classic time for winter storms to come through and just destroy everything. Does a winter water. storm imply, like, snow and ice? No, no. It's just that it's a seasonal period of, uh, storms in the Hammerfall, and in January, that's when you get huge, uh, white-peaked waves and thunder and just shit that, like, destroys even actual warships, much less a little sloop like yours. May, we, may I ask the captain, um, overnight we, we drifted so far off course, may, may I ask, and of no disrespect, who was manning the ship at that time? My helmsman. Your helmsman, and, um, who is he? Like, what is his name, or can you point him out to me? He looks at you for a few moments. I'm the captain of the ship, I take responsibility for any mishaps that may have happened under my watch. <laughs> I, I assume this is not too uncommon to steer a bit of path during of the night, not. right? It's not as if we have an astronomer on board, nor a hydromancer. Yes. It's, it's no ill attend, of course. Alright. Just makes his way back to the helm. Um, well, I was and... like, it doesn't me. What are you thinking? <laughs> you know, I'm just how, thinking... Do you think, how, how do you think he's gonna steer in the middle of the night? It's fucking dark. <laughs> Well, no, I'm saying that maybe the the raven lady, she's, you know, hypnotic, maybe she wants us to be late, and she's hypnotizing the person who's driving the ship. Yeah, maybe you should bring that up, to just just ask Zednis to check on uh, the crew every now and then with his eyes. But doing it like this, I don't want to, I don't want to alienate the crew. Oh, I feel like that I would make see. it easier for them to, uh, to have bad intentions towards us. <gasps> Oh, you make a great point. You guys once again what sleep during like the day. Without us. Uh, I'm sleep... sorry, I don't have great people skills. <laughs> what can ne I say? Neither do I. Yeah, we're nervous. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. You guys sleep oh, during the day and uh, awake during the night to avoid the scorching rays and uh, salty Scorching air. rays? Monka. Because the hot sun. Uh, um, but thought, this should be the last no, day. Enemy wizards. <laughs> this should be the last day aboard the vessel, um, and night falls. I just like to, you know, sort of snapshot what each of us are doing as the night passes. Um, Lars, I assume you are just with Gore in the lower hold, despite the dankness and the sweatiness of the crew, just trying to sleep as much as soon as possible. Do dogs get seasick? Uh, they certainly can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're probably just comforting each other, trying to keep from puking. Alright, Renesme, as previously oh, discussed, Dago. you are, find yourself with the animals as frequently as you can be, though occasionally you have to go to the top deck to get some cleaning. Um, Severus, what are you doing? Probably, you know, uh, what's Zednius doing? How, how is Zednius doing, actually? Is he still sick? Zednius, pause chair. Uh, I think I'm fine. I don't remember. I didn't have to make any con checks yet. I think I'm okay. No, the first day was miserable for all of you, but after you got 
more used to how the vessel functions. It wasn't as sporadic as your journey here. Your journey here was like normal placid, placid storm, normal storm. Like it was just very unpredictable. Whereas this is, no matter what, you're tilting like constantly. So it's more easy to get used to. Yeah. To be honest, I feel like we should open the aerial through all the contract. Maybe. No. I've been able to be in a storm without puking and I'm not a seafarer, so you know. Maybe. On a small vessel. also on a normal ship. That was not a small vessel. No, he's saying. No, I mean, I like out. IRL, me, Hecko. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, it's not that difficult. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Who? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Holy shit, he just destroyed a man. <laughs> he did just destroy you by saying who. That was fucking great. All right, anyway, I can't so, believe it, Zoda. Uh, Zed, Nius, and Severus, the two of you guys are up on the top deck. They're not really, this is not the place to practice fencing, but um, you can chat. I mean, you guys seem to always have little niche topics to talk about. Um, um, I was talking from Atari, so no one else understands this. Sure, yeah. Oh. It I'll fits in pretty well. I mean, this crew is pretty multi- uh, so no one's gonna bat an eye uh, so I'll say, weird language. I guess we can't do like really fencing, uh, but maybe we can like do some. We can do like just some like probably, gymnastics. It's uneven. True, actually. Or like some footwork. Yeah. Just work on some footwork. And during every now and then, I want to just sprinkle in the conversation of um, so Renes may mention she uh, did some research. All of this in Primitari, of course. Mm -hmm. Um. About have you ever heard of the Light Wars? Um, did that come up in my research looking into the necromancer cult guy with the uh, staff? No, it doesn't relate to the armaments. Or the Pelinol Elf Spain or anything? No, okay. It doesn't relate to him either, no. Okay, uh, no, that eludes me. It's a period in time where before the Emperor ascended to godhood, people were doubting his worthiness and they formed a rebellion against him, and he had to strike him down with impunity. As he does? Yes. It's a sore topic that many people don't want to talk about, because some people, while understandable that he had to strike down the rebellion, question his methods, as they do. Um, And Esme might have found out where the final battle happens. Oh. Uh, is there anything that, of interest in there? Yes. The uh, High Kesselsturch, the leader of the rebellion, was in possession of multiple potentially powerful magic items, including a pearl of power. This is near um, Regia. East of Regia. There's, a, uh, there's an area. And... Renes may have thought that maybe once we're back in, um... Uh, once we're back, uh, on the mainland, we could check it out and gather some of those artifacts. Tap some contacts and see what we can find out. We don't think that it's just been completely picked clean? Uh, we don't think so. It seems like the Department of Faith made an act of uh, efforts to suppress the information of this. Mm. Oh, that reminds me. Remember the notes we had about um, Khalil, Khalil's notes. Yes. He was looking well, into. Was happen. Well, that did happen. That was our, I think. The day he said was the same night we had that vision, right? Yeah, but what the hell was it? Oh, yo, I'm not sure. Where Neopep is from. All Khalil shit is written in Neopep. Ah, okay. So that so is it sketchy? Like, do I think they're necromancers? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you've met one other person from Neopep, and he was a necromancer. Now you met a second one. He's a sailor. I don't know how prejudiced this no, will just... be. Oh, I was researching into. Crap! Which note was it? The. I was researching into the staff of um, Kal Rule that Khalil was speaking of. And that seems like that information has also been suppressed by the Empire. The Empire's official statement is that that staff was destroyed. But my research says that one of the heroes may have taken it. 
we know more of the fate of the hero afterwards. Well, I, I know a list of the heroes, and we can we can start to narrow it down and find out where what happened to them. But this was long, long ago. The heroes are no longer around, but their families may be. Um, several powerful families, indeed, actually. But that may be something also we need to look into, because we wouldn't want that staff to get into the wrong hands. Zednius, as you're finishing up your thought, you and Severus have been, you know, stepping back and forth, practicing footwork. You notice that three members of the crew have gathered on just off the front left bow, uh, and they're not saying anything. They just seem to be looking at something out in the water. Not like they're entranced. They're, they're, they're like, looking at one another. Like, the expression, you can't see what they're looking at, because you're not standing Did anyone do this on the other ship? Um, this seems weird. It is weird. Yeah, they're looking at something. I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, after I finish my statement, I'm gonna, like, kind of just, like, look over, lose the focus on this conversation, and just kind of walk over to see what they're looking at. Yeah, you join them on the edge. Uh, Severus, do you walk with Yogurt, or Yogi? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll walk with Yogurt, man. <laughs> no, I miss both. I mean, I didn't miss me. The two of you guys head on to the um, edge of the ship and look out towards the water, and about 200 feet away from the ship, which is incredibly close, considering how vast, you know, the ocean is out here. You, you would expect to see an object like this miles out. It's an empty fishing boat. It's like one of those little, like, wooden boats with a single two oars, and, like, there's no lower... It's just like a small little fishing boat, and there's no one inside of it. And the crew, three crew members, seem just not scared or anything, just, like, really confused how this is here. You guys are... There's no land in sight, either. What do you think happened? I turn to a crew member. Yeah, one of them looks towards you. Well, probably just some poor bastard that went out to sea and maybe got caught up in a storm. I mean, that's what we're frightened of out here, after all. Does the ship look like it's been through a storm? No. Does it look like beaten? There's no damage to it. Wouldn't a, wouldn't a ship have been like, you know... At least have some damage from a big storm? Well, you'd think so, but how else do you explain it? Maybe something got him, or he got lost and gave up and tried to swim back? I have no- I, I wouldn't know. Could be. He just shrugs, continuing to look at this this odd sight, and you know, he waves over a couple of the other members of the crew. So how far away is it? Like, like I said, like 200 feet, very close. Oh, okay. Well, um, that's really far for my magic oh, eyes. Oh, sure, but for <laughs> the distances on the ocean, that's very close. And he'll wave over, so about six of the eight people on duty are now just along this bank and start looking out at this, this empty fishing boat. How many days away are we from the uh, island? We're supposed to arrive in the morning. So we should have a short rest between now and then, we think. Yeah. Well, no, 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 sorry. You're arriving in the morning. You guys have been staying up during nights, so you're going to arrive there, you know, when you're just getting sleepy. Oh, all right. Okay, then I won't do that dumb idea. <laughs> okay. All right, then do you guys just be like, oh, that's weird, and go back to what you're doing? Uh, I'll, if, we're, if everyone is still staying here watching, I'll stay here and watch. Yeah, the boat gets closer. Until it looks like it's actually about to, like, I mean, it's drifting, and the boat, you guys are on, almost, not quite a collision course, but it's going to, like, scrape against the, the hull of the ship. And one of the guys, like, once it gets within 30 feet, it's like, okay, going to be the slightest little bounce. One of the guys begins to turn around to shout to the helmsman, and then he says, actually, I want to see what it looks like when it collides, and some other sailors chuckle. And um, it's just going to be a light, like a little glancing blow. However, as the two ships are about to intersect and the fall of this sloop is about to inter uh, hit against it, the fishing boat passes right through uh, the hull. Incorporeal. How tall is the ship? Can I the sloop can measure on a small ship? little guy? This go the ship that we're on is how high off the water? About 19 feet. Okay, so is when the, it gets close there, enough, I want to imagine deck? it. There is, is there a yeah. Below deck? Is this... uh, I am actively down there. Is yeah, you and Lars both are. I was going to cut to you in a moment. And then. Oh, boy! Booga booga! Once uh, it animals. gets within range, I wanted to look with my eyes. 
Yeah, your eyes begin to glow. This is a desecrated object. Oh. What does desecrated mean? Cursed. Like super cursed. Oh, that's good. Oh, we cut to Lars. Your stomach has been I'm churning gonna... for. Um, what? And I said I'm going to be rushing to the castle, oh. but you said Lars. Yeah, Lars, your stomach has been churning for hours, just like the sea around you. You've been curled up close to Lars and er, Gore, and you see something move. And, and at first, you look into your your eye socket, but it remains dark in there. And then you see passing through the hull of the ship. It only takes maybe. 10 seconds, the whole process. A boat enters through the side of the ship. No indication that it's, like, not corporeal other than the fact that it goes straight through stuff. But it doesn't, like, shimmer or anything. It just goes right through. This small little dinghy passes through the bottom of the hold. You hear a sailor shout out in shock, beginning to wake everyone else up. And by the time, you know, people are starting to groggily lift their heads from their beds, the ship has already passed through the hole. And Maximus, you see a very similar scene. I'll just look at Lars. Uh... Are you talking about like a ghost ship went through our ship? Yeah, Is that what you're saying? Exactly. What? Did, did you guys you hear that? uh like movement from the top deck and probably hear Zednius's voice shouting for the captain. I'm I'm not going crazy, am I? No, uh, with all this rocking, who knows? <laughs> I don't think we're going crazy. <laughs> Lars, you're you're a fucking monster. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I... Other crew members are starting to like get yeah, up from their beds. The captain is groggily pulled on his hat, and he's starting to move towards the stairs. Zedding as you rush down into the bottom hold, the yeah, you can I'll, see the I'll meet them coming up the stairs. Yeah. Oh, uh, why, why was there a boat down there? Captain looks towards Zednius. There was there was a curse. The the ship there was it was a desecrated ship. A ghost ship. Wouldn't. Yes. I wouldn't say much about <laughs> the captain ship, pushes past you, begins to press the up boat. the steps. He looks excited rather than scared. There's a Isn't that, that dangerous? He, he Where just are shouts we? over his oh. shoulder and says, "No, no, that's exciting! I haven't seen one of these in years." Well, it should have just it, it went through the ship. It should be that way now. And let's go to the other side of the. Okay. Yeah, Maximus, Renesmee, you've heard all these shouts, and so you leave the animal paddock and. We can reunite with, I guess Lars never got out of bed, so <laughs> Severus, Maximus, Zednius, Renezme, all four of you are on the, just behind the helm, looking out at the uh, rear of the ship, uh, where the captain is as well, and you can see this little ghost ship is continuing to drift away. It seems to be on the same course it was before, and he points at it and says, well, I'll be damned. That's the second one I've seen in my life. I'm going to have to get a tattoo for what this once I get these? to harbor. Oh, and his face, the, the excitement of talking about this seems to fade away pretty rapidly, and he says, Grizzly death. Very grizzly. I've, I've never, I mean, I've heard of, of ghosts of people, even of animals, but never of a, a oh, ship. Oh, that's a ghost of a person, all right. I've only seen one other in my time. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. A Galadrim war vessel. Never knew what killed the men, but the entire crew looked like they burned alive. Their ship still had the broken, blackened boards to prove it. Two. I've seen two. Most men only see one in their life. <laughs> and the, that's that's a person's ghost, but they take the form of a ship. He shrugs. Odd. Is it dangerous? This one? No, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, it passed through us without harming anyone. If anything, you should consider this off your bucket list. You've seen a ghost ship and live to tell the tale. The Galadrim war vessel I saw whole other thing entirely. Ghost cannonballs don't look scary until you realize that they can interact with uh, men's chests. They could, they could blow someone up. Oh, yep. We lost eight men of our crew before we managed to get away. I wonder how that works. Shrugs. I'm not an arcanist. All I know is two ghost ships. <laughs> he chuckles. Bubble counter. So it's not to... Yeah, he begins to leave the helm and head back towards the hold of the ship, and he pauses for a moment and says, It is odd, though. Normally, you know, you see the people who died aboard the vessel. Strange that it's empty. Um, he shrugs. I'll say this to my group. Can we just make sure there aren't any ghosts climbing on board? 
Yeah, I'll make it. I'll circle the perimeter and like. Have yeah, my, me too. Like, I just a, a quick little perimeter check, you know. Yeah, your eyes begin to glow, Zenius, and you know some of the crew members cringe away from you, uh, and you walk along the ship looking for a sign of a stowaway. Most of the ship is non-magical, you know, to be expected. Your companions obviously are. Um, there are no crazy tethers on crew members, which you've been keeping apprised of. Uh, you do, however, come across a crate. There is an aura radiating from the crate where there previously was not. The aura is of the school of necromancy. Peach, you're going to want to see this. Or Renesme. 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 And Peach, both of you. <laughs> Wait, you found something? I found something. Okay, sh- 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 don't think you can hear us. Um, what do we do? Do we do we call for help? What did you find? You look at the crate. It's rather benign. It says that it's labeled with oranges. And you said it wasn't glowing before. It didn't have an aura before. Or that you walked around the ship for unrelated reasons, looking for. They got, they got oranges. They got oranges on the boat. Uh, well, last thing, you guys have been eating oranges this whole time, even though apparently they've been on board. And they've been speaking Neo Apep. I'm getting no nervous. This um, well, how what, big of an opening seeing? is there? Is there's there any no slits? The, the okay. Is sealed. Just it's who is around us? Seeing? Have they been obviously standing around something? For yeah, long yeah. Now? Zednius and Renesmee. I'm gonna like whisper in Renesmee's ear. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, whisper I'm just, in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wander over. It's necromantic. Sure. There's necromancy in there. Maximus, there is a necromantic energy coming from that. Oh, oranges! I'm gonna pick up the crate. Maximus, Maximus yeah, you walk up. over to the crate and begin to lift it up, and it is heavy. It's a heavy boy. I, like, grab his shoulder, like, no, 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 no. And you guys, all three of you, in fact, everyone oranges. else in this section of the lower hold, you begin to hear a baby crying from within the crate. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh. Not oranges. <laughs> Severus. Severus and Lars. Maximus. There's a necromantic energy coming from that crate. It's probably a fucking demon baby, and you've woken it. I could have gotten pickled fish. Does the crate look openable? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a wooden crate. But now you guys have attracted some attention. Severus has come over. Lars, you are trying to sleep. You just hear this wailing of a baby, and three or four, probably, I mean, all the crew members are off duty, so, like, eight or nine guys are now gathered sort of in a semicircle, keeping their distance from you guys, but still looking towards the crate, like, what the fuck? (laughs) We're going to be trapped on this freaking I'm going to open the crate. Ow. Are you, like, smashing it open or are you just prying it open the usual way? Are you, like, ready and acting? Is that a thing? Tell them to uh, leave. Can I tell the crew to, like, go about their duties? Yeah, you you tell the crew to go about their duties, and you see one of them, you know, mumbling to himself. He's probably going to go grab their captain. But you have a few moments alone with just the five of you. Lars, are you just trying to sleep through this crying ethereal baby? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> so the oh, four of you guys gather around this crate. Maximus, you push uh, a crowbar from nearby underneath the lid and snap it off. And inside, sitting atop a pile of um, trinkets. So I guess we'll separate it. First of all, there is a pile. This chest is filled with trinkets. Uh, they, they're not Mythosian in make. They look like half elven, like sort of. Uh, and trinkets, I mean, like there's. Um, cloth like like very well-made silk scarves there's hoods there's uh jewelry bracelets coinage just it looks like you know a literal treasure trove from this sort of felvin culture of some kind you guys aren't all super versed on that uh and then sitting atop all of this is a baby however uh that baby has met a grisly demise in the past uh it's umbilical cord is wrapped around its neck its face is blue and purple and distended its eyes are bulging from its face and even though its mouth is like there's no way it can make a coherent sound. This, uh, this, this cries continue to exit from its mouth, exiting, through, uh, echoing through the lower hold. Ah, okay. that's, uh... What does Hegel think? Do you think that the, the ghost ship accidentally left it with us or something? Well, it wasn't gonna... going before. I think I poke, I poke the baby. Your finger passes oh. through and the baby continues to... <laughs> what is... Hey, Hegel, if I, like, prod him. Yeah. What, what is this? He, he plops onto your, like, from your arm down to your, like, elbow, and his voice speaks. All four of you guys can hear it clearly. He says, Delicious. Oh. Did your shoulder demon just call this baby demon delicious? Whoa! 
Oh, hold on. Who said I knew I was hungry, but I didn't know I was that hungry. Consume. What is, the baby is your little... Stuff. Is your little boo thing gonna eat it, or do I have to throw it overboard? Can you even pick it up? Are you even able to move it? It said I saw your finger just pass through. You gotta pick up the box. Uh, Can we release you its go to spirit lift the somehow? Crate. It is very well, I heavy. Think... Um, the crate does not particularly budge. You probably need someone else with some muscles to help you lift it. Head to go and make sure the spirit lays to rest. <laughs> Never mind. I... How do you? Is, Hedhagal, how do you know? Hedhagal pip plip plops off your arm onto the top of the crate, and you see the crying begins to intensify, almost like uh, this spirit knows its fate. I mean, you know, you know it's not a baby, but it's still kind of gruesome. Uh, just to look at it, to hear its cries, to watch its hands move. Um, and you tell it to hurry up. Misery, Hel Hed yeah, I'm gonna tell Hegel to put it out of its misery. Already. Yeah, and you watch as starting with the legs, praying. this black void begins to rip into the creature. Um, this spirit seems to feel pain still, and it begins to scream. It's not crying anymore, it's just screaming. Uh, it is a grim fucking sight that Hetagal takes its time. Uh, you, you've you seen Hetagal eat things very quickly, Zenias. It is not doing that here. It is slowly rolling up from the toes to the knees, to the waist, to the chest. The screams continuing the whole time until finally the mouth disappears under the black void. Okay, I was about to just tell him to hurry up and stop playing with it. Why didn't it eat it from the head down? I, you know, I'm not sure. A, a, like a loud sigh mm -hmm. echoes through the the hole coming from the top of the crate. A satisfied sigh. Zednius, I better company. I just, I have, I have to ask you again why you haven't questioned this little shadow thing. I have, of course. He just slowly devoured a demonic baby, and you're still and feeding him rest. other cursed objects and things. Whoa, who said that? This creature yeah. has tranquility. See? Oh, wait, he can speak now. I have to go. He's, he's Hello. A lot. Wait, how how come you can speak now? Always hard. There is no really response. hard. And you hear plop, 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 plop as it rolls back on the Zenia's shoulder. No potential loser. That even though you do scare me, and I do think that you might be evil still, I do find solace in the fact that you sound kind of like an octopus sometimes, and that is a redeeming quality. What does an octopus sound like, Renesmi? Like... Ooh, the little <laughs> Blip, 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 you know? What is an octopus? Ah, that's a story for me to tell you one day. <laughs> Zenius. Yes. You, you know Hetagal well enough. You feel his emotions. He's bonded to you more than just the words that he says. He's lying. That thing did not have tranquility. Well, you know. No one else knows that. They don't know that. that. Yeah. <laughs> they, I, oh dear. <laughs> they don't know that. Yeah. Like he's lying about it having tranquility now? Yes. <laughs> Correct. You don't know oh, that. Oh, that's good. That's good. No, he laid it to rest. Yeah, he laid that's it what to I rest. Said. He said. He even said. He said tranquility. That's what he said. Rest. He said. <laughs> and I agreed with him. Yeah. I backed him up. Well, uh, the captain pushes. Not crying his way, anymore. You know, past some of his men who are lingering up on the upper deck, and he comes down and says, "What? What happened?" Oh, look at... We Ted. laid the, um... There was a spirit on that boat. A demon baby. Hitched abroad with us. I, um... I laid, laid it to rest. Oh. Yep, set soul free. Oh, all right. Oh, man, it's with the Aurelian style now. Oh, man. Okay. And he well, that's grabs the said, lid but... of the crate and puts it back on. Inshallah says, is what I would say. I see. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you, I suppose. Wait, um, question, as you seem to know about these, uh, boat spirits. I'm, it, it was a ghost baby. How does that happen? As I said, it probably died in a grisly way. But you saw it, Renesme. It had the umbilical cord, the blue face. Yes, but I mean, umbilical cord means that 
the pregnant mother must have just given birth to it, and we didn't see the pregnant mother as a ghost. The captain, like, uh, okay, he I'm... seems like he wants to say something, but he has, like, it's like a, he's, like, looking at you like, oh, so innocent. <laughs> like, he's just giving you that look. Well, what? What is it? Why are you looking at me like that? Well, the children die. Most children die. They probably sent it oh. off to have a burial seat. Oh. Oh, as in, perhaps during childbirth, the baby died. He just slowly nods. I, I it was on yes. top of a, a a ghost treasure. Is that out of like respect for the baby? Treasure. Yes, okay. like ghost these trinkets gems. were like physical, right? Yeah, those were not. <laughs> those were not a part of the ghost. <laughs> it was uh, these uh, trinkets yeah. were just in a crate marked as oranges. Yeah, he just we don't know what they are. Taps, you know, the lid of the crate. He's re he's put the lid back on the crate. It still says oranges. What kind of trinkets were you just things? Elvish, uh, as far as you could tell, like elvish loot, essentially. Uh, sorry, half elvish. Not, were they magic? Not elvish. Oh, half no, elvish. No. It's just like it looks like okay. Simbalin, Gladrum. You don't know elvish culture, half elvish culture too well, but it just looks like you know booty treasure. Well, as far as I know, the Gladrum don't oh. have much culture, right? Uh, no, they have, they had a incredibly vibrant one. It just got annihilated. In the oh, last I thought they were just the half elves that stopped caring about their elf side and just kind of integrated. That's no, no, no. They had an incredibly advanced culture. That's just Mythosian yes. Galadrim half elves because they have no home, so they just become Mythosian. Does he look at me like I'm dumb when I say it's ghost treasure? No, no. He, yes. he just says yes, go ghost treasure. He, Not to worry, like, Renesme. I look at uh, you like. <laughs> does he seem like any like oh, geez, was he or treasure? Nervous? Uh, he seems nervous, though, whether that's related to the, you know, ghost of like, the horrifically it, murdered no, child I mean, or the... No, does he seem nervous about the crazy? How, how can you tell what he's nervous about? Revealed? I mean, he is nervous, but what is it about? It's hard to say. Okay, I'll just, I'll literally just ask him. Okay, I'll just ask him, um... What, why is that crate marked oranges? It's for, um, in case we get boarded by, uh, pirates. Oh, the treasure is yours! It's real treasure! Why do you keep it on the ship with I'm you? I'm inside checking up, by the way. Yeah. You know... Ten. Ten, yeah. That's good enough to be like... He says pirates, but, you know, you could replace that word with inspectors, or people checking your cargo manifest, or, you know, reporting the wealth that you're bringing into the Empire, you know? It would work for basically oh, obscuring it from right, anyone. Oh, great, and say... Uh, uh, well, I hope that is properly kicked out on your cargo your manifest, though, then. You're committing tax evasion! Ah. No, I, I'm not doing anything like that. Oh. This is registered a uh, cargo report of. Uh... Is, is, it regist is it registered oh, as oranges? Does he sound like he's lying. I mean, he just said the he port, said the port of, of, of he it off. Yeah, he just mumbled. <laughs> of course he's lying. <laughs> please, please, sir. We we are not stupid here. All right. Oh, no, I mean, except for the part where he said it's ghost treasure. <laughs> No, we oh, can no. tell it's not ghost treasure, and this is not ghost tax evasion, all right? You are very much living, and that is very much real treasure. And they are not oranges either. Look, let's let's calm down. He's still got to get us to the island and back. He's not doing anything super wrong. Yeah. It's just, it's just small trinkets. Well, our lives are in your hands, so just keep us safe, sir. Of course, lady judge. Yes. And maybe we'll overlook this one. Oh, well, we can't say that out loud. So he, just, yep, he, can. Just, he just slaps the lid of grate and just walks just away, backs away from you people, heads back up the stairs. Treasure. That's all it was. I wish those were actually oranges. I'm starving out here. I I'll say quietly, like very quietly, so only a girl is I have no intention to overlook that one. That's fair. I don't care. I just want to get back to this island safely. Just making sure that you don't think, you know. Yeah. I should probably well, report this at some point. Yeah, well, if let's, he thinks I'm going to report it, then he's going to be mad at us. You know, probably going to yes, yes, try and kill us and whatnot. That seems unlikely. I don't think he would try to kill us. He might just leave without us, though. I don't know how he would kill us. If he leaves without us and comes, he can never come back home to the harbor. And we the could ship say we did at sea. Yeah, Again, I'm pretty sure you need like better proof that... The zone of truth exists, and you guys are four. Five, yeah, we're four Imperial judges. Five. Yeah. yeah, we're five Imperial judges. Just bail. Sure. 
I'm pretty yeah. sure they question him a bit. I, yeah, I wouldn't freak about it too much just because, again, think about what happened when one judge went missing investigating a small tribe. They sent three exactly. more judges with, like, you know, even more information. And, and we equipment. killed like, it was, like, double our level yeah, almost. Yeah, so, like, if five judges go missing all at once, this is, like, a empire-wide news story. Like, that's a huge deal. I wonder, yeah, I wonder why the, the ghost maybe ended up on this ship in that crate. Maybe it's well, let's all look part of Aurelian Soul's plan. What, what did the ghost baby look like? Like, was it half Harry. elven? Uh, it's hard to, it's really hard to tell for babies in particular, just because the more well, half elvish traits, exactly. like high cheekbones and sort of androgynous features, don't really develop until like post puberty. What about the ears? Uh, the ears. Were they the, pointy? No, they were not particularly pointy. Okay. So, well, do you just let. The ship be the ship and wait until the morning when you're supposed to come into sight of the island. I wanna open the crate. I yeah, I wanna see if there's anything interesting. Yeah, you guys can Yeah, I wanna search the crate if there's into. anything particularly cursed there. Yeah, Maximus. It's not, he can report like, us for stealing his stolen treasure, you know. <laughs> Maximus, do you just like watch the stairwell to prevent any crew members from coming down to the bottom hole while your friends, comrades, kill for this chest? Uh, I'll, I'd rather they. Why, why would they steal things from it? We're not stealing. We're looking look. through it to in see if anything in there might be of very um, weird nature, Officer, which might I'm have just uh, made this go to here. You don't understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just testing if it's real cocaine. <laughs> it sounds like someone who's, you know, oh fuck, ah. something, someone who's stealing something would say. Go well, no. Investigate. What if there's something hidden in this chest that we don't know about? What if there's a heretical book at the bottom? It just seems unlikely. Uh, well, what if there's, there's a book at the bottom? Searching. <laughs> what kind of right, heresy? Okay, yeah. you, guys, you guys open up the crate um, and you can start searching. I just, I think it's very funny. Like in real life, when they're trying to like smuggle drugs, sometimes they'll put layers of coffee on the top. So instead, you know, they're a heretic and they put a bunch of gold and jewels and gems <laughs> on top, and then they're her heresy <laughs> tax on them. <laughs> Don't put for real oranges, anything like that. <laughs> okay, anyways. They'd never um, suspect it. <laughs> that's really funny. Okay, anyways, so you guys start dad. to uh, look around the chest and... You know, Zednius, you're not even the most connect... Actually, none of you half-elves are very connected to your half-elven heritage, but... It takes you about, like, 20 seconds of sifting through stuff to realize what this is. This is what would happen if a really wealthy person just grabbed everything they could and put it in a chest and just, like, left their house. This is, like, a lot of, um, jewelry, a lot of, like, just the, the full checklist. Like, uh, there's even a little compartment, like a sub-compartment in this, uh, crate that has some food. Though it's long since rotted, long since rotted. Um, there is like beauty products, there is uh, stylings of jewelry, clothes, though very nice clothes. This looks like, you know, a wealthy person cleared out everything they could, like they had to leave their house in a hurry and it's just in this crate. It's probably thousands insignia? of gold stuff. Uh, yes, like there is an insignia, insignia that would... a noble one, but it's what not really recognized. You could oh. know nothing about like, like I said, you three are not very connected to your heritage, so you don't know uh, much can about I, like, get a, Can I make like a sketch or like a copy of it? Yeah, I mean, so there I are dozens of versions of it. Jewelry and clothing and things like that, so you can easily get it. Yeah, I'll just like a rub off or something. Yeah. There is no uh, books, by the way. No, no heretical texts. Oh, no heretical or... books. No. no. Surprisingly. Are no. there any emeralds? Yes, certainly. Is uh, is, uh, is this all? Is this all legal? There's no. Magic. Is any of this no. illegal to have? Uh, it, the oh. only question would be how he got it, because. It is kind of weird for him to have this in the first place, but in terms of the actual stuff, no, none of it's legal. Is there anything okay. that's... Like, so I'm looking for can't... something that's small and really valuable. Like, what's the most valuable small no, thing in here? No! No! Don't take anything! <laughs> no! This is <laughs> his <laughs> shit! We can't just steal it! I'm not saying this out loud. I'm not saying that... I'm not saying out loud. I'm looking for He's this. I'm just saying to looking through the chat. No, I, yeah, I, I don't care. I'm just saying that. We can't... It's I'm just his saying... shit! Just I'm just saying, while we're looking it. through this, right, yeah, while we're looking through this, Severus, slide a hand. Yeah, I, I might palm something, you know? Yeah, slide a hand. I mean, why not? Yeah, you cool. find there's this little brooch. It'd be something that you'd, like, secure a cloak with, and it is encrusted with diamonds, which, obviously, diamonds are rare in real life, but in this world, where diamonds can literally be the difference between someone being dead oh, actually, and then living fuck, a long life. Oh, actually, fuck. If I see morphing with... Yeah. So this is, like, giga ultra valuable this is like the biggest flex ever like this could save your life one day and now it's in my fucking jewelry and there's a diamond encrusted brooch 
How many? Um, how much other that? Be, because because I'm seven. actively trying to get them to not steal you shit. You can make a perception make check. A... Sure, okay. roll a perception. I guess. It's it's gotta be the nineteen. Nope. Damn it. Um. Can I also, too, look for diamond stuff? But I'm doing it benevolently because I want to help save people. Because I can do that with Well, diamonds. yeah, Severus, yeah, you I'll... palm this brooch. It's small enough you can fit it in your hand and easily... Oh, like, take it! Okay. Oh, are you are diamond. you all satisfied there's nothing in there that has... No, I'm not satisfied yet. <laughs> Sorry, I was Renette, trying to see if you can just search through the things. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Other diamonds. I'm gonna bust... I'm gonna bust through them all and basically just, like... Shake up the shit, stir my hands through it, get a real good feel. Yeah. Just, is there anything in there other than valuables? Uh, no. no. Like oh, books, God. books maybe. No. Okay. So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna slam the top. I'm gonna slam the top back on his box. Yeah. Breaks his break my arm. <laughs> no, no, no. It <laughs> is his shit. We cannot just steal it. Maximus. God damn it. How would Why you know? are you all like this? What if there was a Absolutely. terrible heretical inscription on Absolutely. one of the rings? We would have to inspect it carefully. I'm pretty confident that. Yeah, there what is. if you can only read it after you put it in the fire and then it starts glowing? Yeah, we're trying to do a very valuable deep inspection of this contraband, and you're trying to get in the way of our judicial duties. It is some contraband! It isn't! It's not things he's not allowed to have! You can have it! I open the thing and I pull out one of the no, things- No, no, I, I just don't It sounds like Maximus is putting okay. his full weight on this lid, like it would be a- uh... Alright, no. well, you believe that this is his stuff, yes? It is! It's on okay. his boat! What do you Max mean I believe? It just Max is! Well, it might be stolen. It's definitely not declared in the list. If you look in that chest and I'll really put hands up, thief, you, know? you do it yourself, there is cosmetic makeup in there. Now, I don't know about you, but he doesn't seem like the kind of sea shanty that goes and puts on rouge lipstick at the end of the day. He's also not a half elf. Okay. He's a human captain. Also, you know, um, I'm going back to the... Are there even any women in the crew? Yeah, I'm going back to the No women on board. Maybe seems at least stolen. Up. True. Actually, wait, true. You guys are naming someone for... His dressing habits. Yeah, I'll I'm not one to judge. Yeah, what's these okay. cross-dressing peach with you? Well, sure. True. Maybe it's a little weird, all right? But first off, who am I to judge? And second off... <laughs> you literally you know, have to real judge, so if this you are shit, the one if, to judge. If, if the lipstick was worth 200 gold, I'd keep it too. Doesn't matter that I don't wear it. There's multiple cosmetic products in there. Also, there are female and each of the clothing. If someone was like, "Here, take this, take these two thousand pieces of cosmetic products, each worth one hundred gold," what am I gonna say? No. Smith, you're going to awfully strange lengths to defend this person who seems to have stolen goods on board and clearly stolen mislabeled. Goods. Stolen goods. Yes. yes. Were you, were you not, were you not here treasure. when he was very shadily pretending like it was from the location of Berlin? Uh, the label you is know, gorgeous. If I was a pirate and I saw a box labeled oranges, I would probably not open it. A very... Uh, it's not until the end. Well, actually, I would. Well, but what if you're about to get scurvy? I think that pirates <sighs> would open a box of oranges. In fact, they might do it immediately. Also, yeah, for the he, he said that he had it in order to stop pirates, so he clearly knew what was in the box. Even if you it's don't his... agree with us, Even if you don't it's, agree with us stealing shit. it... Where's your evidence? Give me hard proof he stole. Uh, sauce, I made it the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus it's Christ. All, it's all in anyway. Elvish. You're not of Elvish origin, but these are all- they have Elvish inscriptions. This is Elvish heritage that he's, you know. There are feminine products in here. There are f female robes that well, will fit him. Well, maybe you should focus on up. the feminine products. Okay, is right that there. evidence he stole it? Do you see a woman table. on board? Does matter. Is that evidence? It. He stole it. Wait, Maximus, Maximus. Can, can you calm down a bit? You kind of, you're not shouting. Um, I'm just saying, like, maybe, uh, maybe we don't have evidence that he stole it, of course. All right. But we have definitely have reasonable suspicion to inspect it, considering that he was yes. very evasive about where it comes from, where it's supposed to go, and whether he's supposed to have it. Absolutely I, correct. Uh, I completely agree. And guess what you did? You inspected it. Well, not, not to a degree of certainty, no. 
Also, I will say that the only way that Maximus would know that we wanted to take anything is out of character. I think it's a little metagaming because he did a good side nah, of character. he knows yeah. we're all kind of, you know, obvious. I mean, on the gray side of the law. Y'all are fucking gremlins. Y'all are gremlins. Absolutely not. We're all kind of I, So, okay? I, don't, I don't know that he stole something. Right, that, I wouldn't be surprised if Pentagon started eating sure. the whole fucking crate. Well, you guys have been talking for quite some time. While the crew is largely staying back, Zednius went to the top deck, Lars is still sleeping. Occasionally, I mean, it's not like you guys are blocking the stairs, so a drip feeding in, various members of the crew will come down. I mean, these judges seem to be arguing rather intensely. The captain is staying clear because uh, he feels... Uh, he just seemed nervous when he was leaving, though there are a variety of reasons you know what? why could. You know what? Fine. Fine. I'll turn to one of the crew members. You! Yes, Lord Judge. Where's the cargo manifest? We don't have one on board. What? We don't have one on board. Me. We have one registered with the harbor in Red Dinium, and we're, we're going to fill one out once we arrived in uh, Erusia. Hmm. Is a step. Hmm. Hey, 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 Echo. Yes? Is it is it standard practice for actual sailors to have cargo manifests on board the ship while underway? Yes. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Well, I think so. I don't Correct. know. Yeah, it is. The only reason you know, it's I, I've lived in the... is because it's a military vessel. Um, I think that, 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 is, sometimes... that is worth repeating. This is a official Imperial Methosian warship, captained by an officer of the Empire. So, uh, so they might be a war with. Maybe you know, he just spawn. Maybe he just. They probably don't get checked that often. Technically, officially, the Pax Mythosica is still going on. You're not at war with anyone. In reality, you are at war with almost every single one of your neighbors. Maybe it's privateering bounty. And again, the, the Mythosian Empire does not officially endorse any privateering because they're not at war with anyone. But in reality, I know it's not. Shit. You know, I know we're not officially at war with. But, I mean, there are several crew members you, down here, by the way. Just, just a reminder. Not to say that you shouldn't be saying what you're saying. I just want to clarify. You both know the realities of the situation. I feel as though you're giving this situation suspicious charitability. I feel like you're not giving a servant of the empire the credit he's due. Surely she wants to take the got diamonds for the, you know, benevolent reasons. Of oh, so, she do. so she does want to take them. I didn't say yeah. that in character. I'm not here, by the way. I'm not here. I just don't <laughs> Yogi oh, just sorry. shits sorry. during. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't you say that I wanted to take diamonds. Take his stuff. Well, I okay. think. Nobody's arguing that we should, finally, Maximus. You hear a shout. I keep thinking. That carries over the conversation. Comes from above. Land! Capricorn! Rising winter! And. As if that combination of nonsensical words means something. Okay. He watches the <laughs> heads of sailors throughout the hold with you, uh, like, lift towards the deck, and some of them begin to run towards the top deck, and, um, it seems as if... All I understood was land. Yeah. That is probably all you'd understand, correct? <laughs> yes. Uh... Land Fergitude Rising Winter? Land Capricorn Rising Winter. Well, I suppose let's go up top. You guys follow them to the top. Lars, you are awoken by the cries of Capricorn rising winter. Do you get up from your bunk or do you remain? Does it seem similar to the call hole, like last time we were coming up on land? Uh, oh, when you went to Proton, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, then I'll start getting up. All right, you raise up and slowly, you guys make your way to the top deck. Up here, you see fog. Nothing. Uh, go to the bottom of the map. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm blind. Up here, you Don't see fog, dense and thick. Not entirely dissimilar to fog banks that have plagued this patch of ocean for untold centuries. However, it seems denser here. And through that fog, you see a darkened mass Gela Isle mm. do you just remain there watching as the ship the tempest continues to plow through the waters yes okay the tempest creeps ever closer a sense of eeriness begins to 
spread through the crew. Many whispered prayers to Aurelian soul, though a couple of other gods as well. You even watch as one especially superstitious uh, sailor whispers a prayer and then tosses his holy symbol, a wooden one, overboard. You try not to take it as an insult. You sympathize with the sailors, though. Despite the shore looming ever closer, you still can't see a bit of it. Only a dense fog which hangs over everything. The first mate can speaks in your direction and says, It's fine, judges, it's fine. Just a bit of fog is all. Is this not normal? I've only been to Galahar once before, but it seems to always be this dour. I see. Um, I'll speak to my fellow judges. Um, I can clear the fog with uh, my conjuring strong winds if necessary. Just, just to keep in mind. All right. Slowly, the shark comes into view as well, and you hear a squawk. Something emerges from the fog. A crow with sleek black feathers and bead black eyes lands on one of the railings. A sailor half-heartedly tosses it some bread, and you pass by rocks jetting from the water. The captain seems to be very focused on uh, commanding the ship, and a settlement begins to come into view. The fog does not part at any point. You start by seeing only the outlines of buildings. But once it's fully into view, once you press through the fog and get closer, you find an imperial city transplanted into the middle of this eerie and foggy terrain. There's a fort along a river edge with, um, it essentially looks like something straight from the Deadwood Frontier placed here. And the city itself has the classic uh, imperial uh, layout for docks and um, the Central Town Square, the church to Aurelian Soul. All of it looks like, you know, some imperial planner made it directly to specifications. Um, and before we explore uh, Gala Isle any further, we are going to take a five minute break. Woo! So, so are we going an extra? So, oh, um, you guys, the Tempest, pulls into harbor, and waiting at the pier for you is a local delegation, though whether they knew you guys in particular were coming or they were just waiting for guests is unclear. Um, visibility is shit, um, but obviously you can still see the men sitting on the harbor itself. Uh, it seems to be a local garrison. Um, Uh, it seems to be the local garrison, um, consisting of a couple legionnaires and only one person bearing a rank above legionnaire, a single optio, which is the equivalent to like a sergeant. Um, us usually, you guys are used to seeing these command a single contubernium uh, on the Deadwood frontier, but here he seems to command about 20 men. Additionally, none of these legionnaires are older than the age of like 20. Most of them look like 19, 18, 17, 16, in that age range. Um, and as the Tempest pulls up to the harbor and men hop off to tie the moorings and overall secure the vessel to this location, uh, the Optio approaches. He seems to be walking in the direction of the captain first, but when he sees five armed people on the ship, he pauses for a moment. The captain shouts out, Judges! And the Optio seems to take that in for a few moments. Judges! Why are you here? We're here on um, investigative business. Do you need anything from there's, us? There's a suspect that we're trying to pin down. And I'll say quietly okay. in from Atari, are they enchanted, Zednius? I'll flash my eyes at these guys. When nope. he's after he says something, You're, as your eyes um, begin to glow, though, you do see the man reach towards his weapon almost instinctually. Laura's just still kind of getting over six, but he says, "Uh, well, if we, we should be fine on our own, but if we need anything, we'll let you know." We're going to need a uh, logic. So you're sorcerers then? Not all of us. We have some magic users. That's what you're saying. Right then. Um, I'll go inform the quester of your arrival. I'm sure I'll have a room for you. And is uh, Thank you. 
there any ground rules we should go over? Or do you guys, uh... Anything sure special here? Oh. Alright. Despite the person, the Optio being only probably 20, he looks very dour uh, for his age. This very, very little, like, decorum or drill. His Do they have the is... same... Sorry, keep going. No, uh, do they have the same uniforms as the people on the main island? No. They, that's is this like the same group? Yeah, oh, it's, are, it's separate? Uh, or, no, it's not separate. These are like, just, they're not uniforms. They're like things they've been able to pull together, scraps of armor, like a spear here, a shield here. There is no regulation or, you know, central management. Uh, th these barely look like legionnaires. Are they affiliated with the main island? I mean, they seem to think so. They have the rank patches for it, but who's to say? Okay. Um, but the man who identified himself as an Optio walks down the harbor, leaving you guys walking towards that distant fort. Um, it's going to take him a while to get there. It's about half a mile away. Uh, the rest of the folks um, are still uh, on the pier and begin to help the crew of the Tempest unload the vessel. Uh, they unload a variety of things, uh, mostly some, like, textiles and tools. Not really any food. The, the people here seem fine on that front. It's mostly just, like, metal metal uh, things like that and this seems to be a joint effort between the tempest as well as the uh legionnaires to get it unloaded as quickly as possible uh but news of judges seems to spread through the town rapidly and... are they unloading the orange crate by the way no okay um and as you guys are waiting for that optio to return a crowd has assembled at the base of the pier uh maybe a hundred people or so uh most of them don't really look it's hard to say because like mythosians don't really have a look like, they're, they're from so many different geographic places. But these definitely don't look Mythosian. Most of them have red or brown hair, uh, which are pretty rare in Mythosia. Obviously, Maximus has one, but he's probably the old that you've seen in your travels. Um, they just don't really have the facial features either. They have more, uh, like, wider noses. In general, they just don't look like your average Mythosian. Um, but, I mean, you guys just hang out on the pier while you wait for the vessel to unload and the Optio to return. Yeah, a lot of parties can come for Gore and whistle at him to not get rowdy with all the people around. Okay. I'm mainly going to follow the people that were on this mission before, because I'm not as up to date on it. What? Okay. The burning yeah. mission. So the five of you guys just uh, gather at the end of the pier. You bring your horses off, you bring the animals off. All of them survive the journey. Um, and once the vessel is unloaded, one of the men uh, speaks to the captain. You know, they're just like talking some distance away from the two of you. You see some. Um, letters like get handed over to the captain uh, and the captain of the tempest walks over to the uh lot of you says well judges i was my orders were sort of uh loops obviously I'm supposed to bring some cargo for them uh but what do you want me to do i can stay here in verusia while you're walking around the island if you think it'll take a couple weeks i can inform the next uh, supply shipment to wait for you Shouldn't be longer than a week, I wouldn't assume. At least not for now. We'll keep you updated, though. Then do you want me to stay here in Verusia, or...? Preferably. All right. Well, uh... All right. He shrugs and begin, brings his crew back on the ship and begins to give them a long, you know, dressing down and explanation of they're going to be on shore leave, but they need to maintain, you know, readiness that so at any moment they can set off and return to Breton. Mm. Um, where, while the quote-unquote legionnaires uh, from this place... Uh, they mostly wait at the pier, seeming to wait for that Optio to return. Um, rain continues to pelt down on you guys. The fog doesn't get any better. You know, it's probably noon by now. Uh, in anywhere else you've been, the fog would have burned off, but just a foggy island. Uh, crows, however, are everywhere. You see one, you see two. You, within just the village that you can see, the dock, you know, you see maybe a hundred just within your immediate mm -hmm. vicinity. And then, at the far end of the pier, the crowd that has sort of assembled parts, and you see two people. And the first is the Optio, the young man who left earlier. The second seems to be some sort of local figure of import. This person looks like a quaestor who had something very wrong happen in their career. There isn't an exact science to imperial rank structure, but typically, quaestors are young men or old men who have no hope of moving up in life. Middle-aged men, like this person here, are supposed to be tribunes or aediles or proconsuls, so to see such a finely dressed person with an aristocratic bearing here, 
on the armpit, you know, distant uh, flea mm-hmm. of the Empire. It's not good for him. Certainly not good for his career. And there's this disgruntlement that practically oozes from him as he walks down the dock to uh, catch up with the five of you. Um, or head over to the five of you. And he, as once he's within, you know, the fog no longer obscures his shape and he can really look at the five of you, he speaks out, uh, though it's kind of hard to hear him because of how far away he is and how soft he speaks. He says, Judges! Judges. <sighs> He walks a bit closer, supporting himself with a cane. So, you're here. Indeed. We're here. Conducting Why? investigation. What are you investigating? Um, a number of things. Well, well first and foremost. Um, there's been some disturbing case of sabotage and, uh, it's Ravinium, right? Ravinium is this, uh, the town we just came from? Red, red Dinium, but yeah. Red Dinium. Red Dinium. Um, and they lead to a woman who originates from this area. Hmm. A woman. Yes. A woman with... I'll look around. Is anyone listening in? Yeah. There's the 20 or so legionnaires. There's the crew of the Tempest. There's the 100 people at the far end of the pier who are like strange yeah. players. I'm just saying... I'm That's all we can discuss. 100 ravens now. Yeah, the 100 Hundreds ravens. <laughs> qualities. The Quaster shrugs very heavily and says, Fine. Fine. We'll go back to Fort Varus and we'll discuss it more there. Uh, you've already met my deputy, Octio Constantine. In fact, he looks around the dock. You have now met the entire Imperial garrison for Gala Isle. So consider yourself uh, honored. I'm going to slight bow. He yeah, I'll, like nod my does head. Does not them. reciprocate, <laughs> and he begins to limp back down the dock, supporting himself with his cane. The militia, legionnaires, whatever you want to call them, from here on, uh, joined him um, in the crowd parts and begins to slowly return to their business. Though several gawk at such people of prominence and a reminder that they're even in the empire, because you notice there's not a lot of sign that they are beyond you guys. There's no flags. There's no Kairos. There's you no know, like proper garrison. They're all um, cultists. Burn it down. <laughs> There is, however, a church to Aurelian Soul Trill. Um, but yeah, you guys can head past them and make your way to the uh, Fort Deverus, go test the cloister. Make sure he's actually a, of the faith. Monk at W. Slowly, the fort comes closer. Uh, as I mentioned before, it is your classical uh, fortress. It is um, built very similarly to Fort Romulus, probably built in that same era around 80 years ago. Uh, it certainly needs some work done. Uh, the river must flood or something because several of the walls have been battered down. It looks like water damage has afflicted this entire fort. It's getting battered by rain from the southward side and almost all the surfaces there are smoothed out or fully just crumbling apart. Um, that tower doesn't even look like it's inhabited anymore because there's no sign of it on the exterior. Only the central keep seems to show any sign of people living there. Uh, and as you approach the fort, uh, what looks to be like a young man, not like a kid, like a 12 year old, is the one who ratchets the gate and pulls the portcullis up, though it, it like seizes up about half, once it's halfway open and the quaestor just grumbles and waves you through under the half open uh, portcullis. Is it normal for it to be this foggy? <laughs> you came here on a good day. A month ago, you wouldn't even be able to see your own hand. Oh, wow. Is there a reason why there's so much fog? Surrounded by water, perhaps? A shitty and disgusting island, blighted by the Almighty. Oh, I take it that you aren't quite fond of where you live, then. He just grumbles and continues to walk into the inn, like, climbs up the steps using his cane for assistance up into the central tower of the fort. The, uh, garrison, the militia splits from you guys, only the Optio and the Quaster uh, head into the central keep with the two of you. Uh, and keep really is like a generous thing to call it. The first floor is two rooms, what seems to be a sitting room and then a kitchen. 
the Quaster, once again, uses his cane to struggle up to the second floor, uh, which has two additional rooms. One is a bedchamber with the door open. There's a young girl and an um, older woman inside. And the other chamber is clearly a office, which is tightly compressed. Um, and the Quaster uh, struggles into there using his cane for assistance. And the Optio closes the door to the bedroom and then sits down beside the Quaster on the you know, business end of the desk. Well, is this private enough for you? Yeah. Praise the Emperor. Any reaction? He just looks at you. Okay. Yeah, so um, praise him and his power. Okay, it does not seem to be very... Yes, uh, yeah. this will do. I was just... didn't want to... have word spread around of people that we're looking for. It would cause interruptions for our investigation. So you're looking for a woman? Yes. Yes. Um, I got a fairly good look at her before she transformed, right? Yeah, you did. Okay, I'll describe her. He nods and says, All right, I mean, most women around here have either black, brown, or red hair. Tattoos, I don't know. You could be describing hundreds of women, maybe thousands. I suppose the age. There are though. thousands of women here on the island? 17,000 people on this island. If I recall from the last census, 17,255. Well, I thought that we met them all on the pier. No. That was just the outpost. The ah, I'd see. Those are all the only citizens of the Empire on the island. <laughs> Me and everyone else here in Fort Varus. I suppose you we can leave it to us to start down. narrowing it down at least, so. We should be able to figure it out. Sure, with what you said. A couple hundred women match her description. She could be from the Mackay, she could be from the Hills people, she could be from the Zevran. Are there any, um, any, what, what, what's the word? Like, I don't want to say tribes, but I want to be like communities that are outside of lands. Land, yeah, lands inhabited by people outside of your. Um, outposts? I think you said clans, by the way. Clans? Are there any lands outside yeah. of... <laughs> this Inhabiting. whole fucking fetid isle is outside of my control. I have 24 men. Clan. How do you think I could command 17,000? I'm what lucky to get my name? full tax revenue from Barusia. You don't know yet. You haven't. You just assumed he was a quaster based off what the Optio said, but he isn't interested Arms. in stuff yet. What, um, what use does the Empire have with this island? It seems like they haven't sent you many resources. Well, if the Consul Superioris is to be quoted, as he said, the Empire does not need an explanation for why it clings on to its extant possessions. Empire is Empire, and that is enough for its own sake. <laughs> I wish he'd try to repeat that speech Wise after words. living here. I'll just say, like, <laughs> loud, loud, just wise words. To see his reaction, he's probably pretty annoyed. Yeah. Does the, uh... Words, Raven Tyrant. Anything important to you guys here? He looks at you, looks at the Optio, the Optio looks at him, he looks back at you. And? No, he just... He thinks there, he has no fucking idea what he is. He doesn't, he doesn't know. Do you, you have know any, of um... any group of people, or... Uh, I don't know, that really like the birds here? The ravens, the crows... Worship Every little anyway. quack tribe out in the hinterlands has something they hold sacred. Half these people believe they're the center of the universe. The Makai have them and their shoals and their fish and their disgusting fucking culture. And then you have the hills people up in the mountains. You have the Zeverin in the southern woods. You have every little... Are there any, um, are there any like, researchers on your island that just want to research the history and the, the environments story. and the peoples, the lore, the history? There is a... Professor from the symposium of Nasius, I believe. He's currently staying here in the fort. I forbade him from leaving the safety of Verusia, and then would get himself killed trying to deal with the tribal folk. We would be able to meet with him and or take him along with us. <laughs> Please, get him out of my hair. He doesn't know what it's truly like. He's still excited to be in this hellish place. Well, I'm sure where we'll be I'm going. How long have we been, been, been stationed here? been stationed here three years and four months and six days and also we haven't which not interested us 
Um, Severus Octavius Olazignia. Yes. Wonderful. What's your name? <sighs> I am Quaestor Publius Marcomanus Titus Vivia. You say Titus Regio? Right right Viria, not Viria. Regio. You can call me Publius, though. I haven't had anyone use my full title since I came to this place. Call Half of the young sure. men that are now in my legion couldn't even speak Mythos when I arrived. You have a beautiful name. Yes, thank you. Your mother God had damn. exceptional taste. God damn. I'm sure. She's Why are you doing this like this? Anyway, is there any uh, major rules, I guess, or things that go on around the island we should keep an eye out for? Outside of Verusia, everything is beyond my control. As I said, 24 men, 17,000 people. There are a couple of uh, imperial patricians who have made it their own manners and estates out in the countryside. Um, the vast majority of the population lives within the hills or along the coasts. You'll find a fishing village every mile or so. Most of them, as I said before, they're not going to be what you expect from the Empire. I know you're all judges. I'm sure that you have encountered quite a few faithless in your time that you've purged, but unless you intend on killing the whole island, I'd recommend on calming that instinct. Trust me, when I first arrived here, I attempted to convert the whole of just one city. And here we are, three years later. Well, thankfully, that's not what we're here for. Um, well, are these people usually time. violent or attack on site? Yes, the hills especially. The Makai can be more reasonable, but any insult of their pagan god or any trespassing into their moors will result in them attacking. And what do most of these tribes speak? Do they speak something that we're going to be able to understand? Lingua Franca is Gelen, the horrific abomination derivation of Pertonic, but enough of them speak common that it should service you. At least their traders and merchants will. All right. Any specific well, tribes the other... connected to birds? Everything's connected to birds. I mean, let's wait yeah, until we meet the professor, the right? He'll yes, know. yes, please go speak to him and take him off my hair. I don't have enough food to feed him if he intends to stay here all winter. All right. Well, if you uh, need That's to speak Constantine, with us again, go take them to uh, Professor Pushton, please. And the Optio stands up from his chair. Um, despite his lack of, you know, drill and uniform, he still seems somewhat enthusiastic about his... A little bit more enthusiastic about following orders than you'd expect from such a shitty spot. Um, and the Optio heads to the doorway, opens it up, and says, Lords and Lady Judge, I'll take you to him. He's probably out back. He's been interested in frogs. Well, it's nice meeting you, oh. Publius. Uh, we may only see you again next time we leave. He raises his right arm as like a acknowledgement that you're there. How old is this guy? Uh, is he also like 20? Oh, mid-40s, okay. No. So he's just in charge of a bunch of kids, essentially. Yeah. And like not even that many. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't seem happy. We're fulfilled. <laughs> yeah, most certainly not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what Perhaps this sense, there's, there's no job <laughs> satisfaction here. Yeah. Uh, the Optio leads you guys downstairs uh, through the past the dining room and the kitchen, um, exiting the keep. The second you leave, once again, rain begins to assail you. Um, the air is so filled with moisture that you get wet just by walking through it. Um, there is no stable either, so your horses are simply tied to a post outside the central keep. Uh, the Optio will lead you across the muddy ground towards the back of the fort, which overlooks the uh, river to the west. and. Uh, he points down towards the riverbank. It's a really steep, like, decline, like a 15-degree decline down to the river. And amongst reeds and things like that, you can see, well, an imperial scholar transplanted into this miserable terrain. He has a white press tunic, a red vest over that, uh, bifocals around his eyes, and a little, like, satchel bag on his side. And he seems to be sketching in a notebook as he stares down into the reeds near the river. I'll just kind of look over to the guy that was asking us, like, what that looks like is this are we okay is this normal <laughs> yes that's what he does all day all night he is not waterproof nope i'll go up to him yeah you what slide how are you gonna well, navigate down the slope you're just gonna like slide down it or are you gonna try to avoid getting dirty and like walk around the long way oh i'll, I'll slide down 
Okay. Yeah, you just slide down the dirt slope, little uh, bits of stone that are present in the soil tumble down the slope ahead of you, alerting the uh, professor. And as you slide down and just, like, as you stand up at the base of the slope, you're, like, five feet away from him, and he adjusts his bifocals to look up towards you, and then your companion's up on the hill behind you and says, Oh! <laughs> Hello! And he extends a muddy hand in your direction. I will shake, I'll extend my hand and shake his muddy hand. Yeah, he does a deep bow. Pleasure to says, meet you. Uh, <laughs> pleasure to meet you well, ma'am. Um, and sirs, he gives a wave up towards the rest of you guys on the slope. All float down. Oh, oh, down. oh my! A uh, magician! How let me far guess, down let me guess, it? let me guess. Not a, not a wizard. You don't, you don't have the air about you. Sorcerer, maybe, maybe, potentially. Hmm. What else is there? Not a cleric, I can tell that. <laughs> I'm going to guess. Sorcerer. Right on. Good job. <laughs> I knew it! You, you had the... You had the Clap the a little bit. You know? I don't, sorry, I, that may have come off offensive. I don't mean entitled. I know some people think that about sorcerers. I don't. Uh, naturally gifted. Uh, effortlessly cool. You, I, stand. I heard you were looking at frogs down here. Uh, oh, no, not just that at all. You see, the, the fauna of this isle is incredibly fascinating. That's why I'm here, but it's an added bonus. Um, and he sort of, he was mostly focused on Zednius and Renesmee since they were speaking to him, but he sort of notices the plate armor wearing Maximus and, you know, the, the other more rough and tumble members of the party. And he seems to, the gears start to turn in his head. He says, Oh, you're not guests of the Quaestor, are you? Judges. No, we're not. Some we're imperial judges, yes. Judges. What, what's the yeah. angle of the slope like? It's like 15 degrees. It's pretty steep. Uh, how, how far is it down? It's really not that far. You can just slide down and join Peach and uh, sorry, no, but like, how far? Seconds. How far? Like, just jump like a thirty foot, thirty foot drop. Okay, so not jump. Feet. I shouldn't jump it. Probably not. I'll slide it down just like trying to keep my balance in two of my. Yeah, feet. you use your hand to slide down instead of your butt. And no, I'm not your... using my hands at all. Oh, oh so you're I'm trying to use my like to hold my balance. Oh, okay. I'm, I see what I'm you're doing. Feet down. Down. Yeah, you stay on your feet and slide down, landing. Uh, you know, uh, standing upright at the base of the hill. He says. Oh, impressive. <laughs> and he extends a muddy hand to shake yours. Um, I probably have gloves on, surely. Yeah, he sees oh, you oh, looking at his hand, it. and then he says, oh, one moment. He moves it down to the river and cleans it off a little bit. I mean, there's still dirt on it, but it's like he ran it through the water, so it's a little bit better, and he extends his wet hand in your direction. Yeah, uh, I'll shake it. Several oh, pleasure activity. to meet you. Oh, uh, sorry, I haven't introduced myself. Zemirov Pushtin, uh, professor of the Symposium of Nauseus, specializing in pagan studies. Oh, oh very wonderful! Okay. That is exactly what we're looking for. Looking for. Uh, uh, all right, <laughs> I've never seen someone so excited about my position before. Uh, do you mind do you if I get out of the water first? <laughs> oh yes, of course. Uh, he pulls himself up, it, like out of the river and the reeds onto the shore. He's wearing these like sort of uh, boots that seem to be made of some sort of fur that's water repellent, and uh, boots with he the fur? begins to. <laughs> Jesus. He begins to shake off the boots a little bit and says, um, well, I suppose where to start? What do you know about this? And I'll produce the coin. And he, he adjusts his bifocals and, you know, washes both of his hands off in the water, puts his notebook into his satchel, and then grabs the coin and inspects it. So, and looks like a coin. Iron, if I had to guess. The words mean nothing to you? The symbols. Looks like Britonic. The dates. I'm a theology. Theology of pagan studies. I, I don't do uh, material artifacts like this. Hmm. You speak a language. Viewer. Uh, what language? Yellen? Oh, I've picked up phrases here and there. It's a very strange dialect. I could probably speak with one of them, though. Do you know anything about, um, so, m myself, I'm a druid, um, mm. well, congratulations. So, thank you, um, I can turn to animals, um, mm. but, but we've heard of, um, this legend, this thing, where, could someone perhaps 
change half into an animal and stay there, say a crow. Have you heard of any legends of this? Well, of course. There's two distinct types, though. Of course, you have your classic lycanthropes, werewolves, were-ravens, were-boars, were-tigers, where uh, God knows, there's a thousand different versions of the story. And then you have your skin changers, creature men, which can adopt the essence of a creature without their body truly physically changing all that much. Well, we're talking about people who island. do this short term. Short term. I suppose that'd be more like a... More like a... Sounds more like a lycanthrope then. Typically, the myth says that uh, during a moon. Oh, so they might only be able to turn into... Well, that's that. what the typical oh, folklore no. says, but again, uh, we're mixing stories here. You see, here on Gela Isle, I believe they believe in both the things we're talking about. They, they believe in skin changers, but they also believe in lycanthropes. Uh, uh, werewolves. Anything what other than a, wolves? Um, were raven. Were raven. Were raven. I didn't think I've heard of that. Hmm. Assuming if they can't, or if they can change on command, that it's not one that needs a full moon, right? Correct. Here on Gala Isle, they believe in werewolves, but believe it's a uh, more of a demonic pact than a curse. Demonic pact. Yes. Like um, I deal with the. Uh, Devil's not the right word, but consider it that. That will have to do. They don't believe in uh, the same demons as you and I, you see. Uh, what we would consider, you know, the ancient mm -hmm. the ancient demons of old. Uh, they would more consider evil spirits. Uh, they consider the almighty e uh, demon. Uh, essentially, all non-pagan gods, what they would consider. Pagan. So, they deal with God, I suppose you could say. What are the... Um, uh... Go ahead. Can you give a brief rundown of some of the major factions of the pagans you've researched? Oh, no, actually, because I haven't left the city. The oh. oyster has forbid me. I've read about them, but I haven't really interacted with any of them on my own. And well, let's just say what the what reading I've done is from... Well, what I've read is that there are three evil peoples on this island who are hard-pressed in every desire to destroy the Empire and that they should be removed forthwith. I don't believe that. That is what I have read. That is why I'm here, actually, to, to learn more about these people before they may inevitably get wiped out through a mythosification, if you will. Well, to cut through a lot of these pleasantries, do you have a better place we could talk? Um, no. Well, then I'll cut uh... to the chase. We need someone that's going to be coming with us to visit some of these places outside of the uh, this town and around the island. We're you hoping to take you with us. We've already gotten permission. We've already asked. <laughs> well, then why, why are we still here talking? We should be going. We haven't rested yet, right? We're probably no. tired. Have what time noon. of the day is it right now? It's like noon. You cut out. Noon? It's like noon, but you guys have been staying, like, doing a really weird sleep schedule. Uh, We've okay. been up since, like, yesterday. Well, we probably want to rest first, coming from our trip overseas, so... Probably be leaving first thing I, got my things. I didn't think I was ever going to leave this. I'd spend three months on this place without getting a chance to see any of the locals. You... All to right, get a well, good idea of where we're going to be going, does the, uh... words Raven Tyrant ring any bells for you? Of course. He's one of the local uh, pagan kings. Not really gods. More so kings. Any, yeah, want to know of a any... tribe or cult that specifically worships him? Yes. Worships? Worships? Uh, no. Or veers? No, he's just more a part of history. It's like a... Any place that's linked very specifically to him? Oh, most certainly, yes. It's real I think those places will going. be of interest to us. Oh, well, yes. it's just the northern mountains. Those are where his old realm was said to have its capital. Well, then we shall venture there first. All right, then. Exciting. Do you think there's any chance we could stop by and meet with the Makai? I want to know. Who are the Makai? They're a tribe to the them. east of here. Many of these tribes, um, kind of like an attack on sight type of yes, thing? Yes, but you're judges of the Empire, surely. A couple of spears, you can just ignore it, and we can move on with negotiations. Well, maybe we should do that on the way back. Our task is slightly urgent. All right, I'll go gather my things. You'll be ready by the time you're awake. Okay. 
he climbs we, um, with you guys. Please don't talk to everybody about this. Because Krishna is about. What I talk to the Quaster and his poor wife and daughter, or he points towards the top of the slope where the Optu is, or the local rabble that have been <laughs> odd pressed into service. These people here are not happy, huh? No. <laughs> None of us Mathosians. None of the local Mathosians want to be here. I think I may be the only one in the whole fort that does. Why is that? Have you looked around? Rain well, why are fog. you happy here? Because this is... This, this was never conquered. The... Giles the Uniter arrived here, killed all their local deities, burned their statues, destroyed their cities, carved his conquest into the psyche of every person on this island. And then there was no follow-up. There was no temples established. There was no secured rule asserted. This is a place untouched with the cultural understandings of us or of those who came before us for 1,100 years. This is it's like a, a time capsule. I suppose it is interesting. Yeah, it does sound very interesting, honestly. I agree, and that's why I want it to be. Although, here. incredibly heretic, her heretical, of course. As I said, oh, if you concern yourself with who and who isn't a... Well, let's just say we're going to be encountering a lot of pagans, and it'll stress your yes, sense of understanding. Like I said earlier to the cloister, let's not get distracted by that. I agree. Oh, no. There's a lot no, to be learned from these not. individuals. Severus, we must take sympathy upon them, for they've never heard the message of Aurelian Saul. No, they have. They've rejected saying... it wholeheartedly. Oh, they have a I'm just saying that we should, you know, keep in mind that while these cultures are interesting, fascinating, they're also heretical and wrong in nature. Yes. Well, it's the And as we've seen from the, um, never mind. You guys climb the slope, the Optio's waiting at the top silently. Um, he satisfies the guys. Must to and say, is there a place that we can procure supplies, uh, camping equipment, food, rations, that kind of thing? You can buy it in Borussia from the merchants. And just nod. Nods. You, the, you and your, your party alongside this professor, Pushtin, and the Optio will head uh, to the fort proper. Uh, they had, have, like, guest rooms here. Uh, the professor has been sleeping in the dining room, or sorry, in the living room. Uh, you guys will be told to nap there as well by the Optio. Um, he says that the Quaster is not feeling well and will be able to, like, have dinner with you or wish you luck on your adventure, but he'll be awake. Uh, and you guys can begin to nap, get your sleep in, get a short rest in as the professor packs his things. And that is where we're going to end today's session. Very cool. A strange backwater. A lot of depressed <laughs> mid-oceans. <laughs> a disgraced, uh, quite an odd place. Well, um, I think we are good for next week. Um, we'll figure that out. Um, I think that is all. Any last thoughts? Anything for the good of everyone that needs to be brought up? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Alright, well, I will see you guys next week. Um... Bye.